Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me call to order the meeting of the Merrimack Planning Board for Tuesday, May 16th, 2017. It is 7.05. I apologize for waiting a few extra minutes, hoping that some more members would show up, and they'll probably be here shortly. Uh, but nonetheless, let's get started with some business. Let me remind everyone who's going to address the board to make sure you sign in on this clipboard that's on the table in front of me. Make sure the microphone is turned on and the bright green light is lit. That's so the folks at home can hear you, because even if you have a very nice loud voice and I can hear you, the folks at home cannot without the microphone. So you need to do that. Uh, let me designate uh, both Paul and Nelson into voting positions for either Mike, Vinny, or Lynn, whichever one of those stays gone for the whole, <laughs> for the whole meeting today, so that we've got uh, for the moment, five voting board members. Uh, with that, that brings us to item two on our agenda, which is the Planning and Zoning Administrator's Report. Robert, is there any report for tonight? Um, just that the projects that come before you are not of regional impact. Okay, so there was a memo in our package which highlighted each of the projects that are coming before us and suggested that all of them um, should be determined by the board to be not of regional impact. What's the will of the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we accept the recommendation of staff and that none of these matters should be considered of regional impact. Is there a second for Alistair's motion? Nelson's got the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? So that is 5-0-0. Zero, zero. And now that Lynn's arrived, you two are in for Mike and Vinny. Um, so, Robert, is there anything more for the Planning and Zoning Administrator's report? No. Are there any questions or comments from members, from members of the board for staff? Seeing none, we'll move on to item three on our agenda, which is Hoyle Tanner and Associates as the applicant and OVP Management Inc. as the owner. This is review for acceptance and consideration of final approval of a site plan for the renovation of an existing retail shopping plaza, including the addition of 4,650 square feet of new restaurant space. The parcel is located at 360 Daniel Webster Highway in the C2 General Commercial District, Aquifer Conservation District, Planned Residential Development Overlay, and Elderly Housing Overlay Districts, Tax Map 4D3, Lot 1. And with that introduction, I will recuse myself as some of my Soloway colleagues have some interaction with these applicants, and that would create a conflict. So I will turn the gavel over to our capable uh, let's see, deputy, deputy chairman, vice chairman, vice chairman, and I'll go sit over in the corner. Thank you, Mr. Best. Yeah. And good evening, gentlemen. Please, uh, when you're ready, go ahead and tell us the situation of what you, how you've got on with since you last appeared before us with your conceptual plan. Sure. My name is uh, Bill Davidson from Hoyle Tanner. Also with me is uh, is Rob Barsamian from OVP Management. And we were here a couple months ago uh, to explain <clears throat> the redevelopment of the old former Shaw's uh, site, which I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with. Uh, we also went to the Conservation Commission two weeks ago. I believe in your package there's a, uh, there's a letter from them or an email from them stating um, some minor conditions that they had. But overall, I think they were very receptive to the, uh, to the plan. I'm going to grab this microphone just so I can go over by the board. Please do. Is that on? Um, <clears throat> so this is the this is the plan. It's very similar to what we had had um, last month when we were here. Um, obviously, this is uh, DW Highway. The lot is 4D-3-1. Um, dash dash it's about 14 acres in site uh, in size. This pink building right here is the existing building as it is right now. The uh, little bit darker pink in these two locations are new proposed building pad sites. Um, <clears throat> building B is 4,000 square feet in size, and Building C is 650 square feet in size. The existing uh, parking that is out there, this area here that we have shaded in gray is going to be reclaimed um, and new pavement. The back portion that goes around is going to be crack sealed and seal coated and um, it's not going to be torn up, but the front section is going to be all new pavement. There's new, new lighting, um, water services, sewer services, drainage, um, some guardrail in front, curbing. This drainage system that's in the front, uh, there's always been 
This entire site flows to the south towards Daniel Webster Highway, and there's a curb there with a number of existing catch basins. We're going to add a, a couple more catch basins in that location to catch the water a little bit better, as well as <clears throat> replace the curbing there. They've had, uh, they've had cuts in the curbing, like three to four foot cuts in the curbing to allow the water to, to bleed out into the, uh, into the drainage swale. We're going to be able to capture that into a closed system, and we also <clears throat> have added uh, a storm tech chamber system. There's about 60 chambers in this front location here. So there's been a, a vast improvement on what we've done with the, uh, what we've done with the drainage. <clears throat> that being said, we've also added a large green area in the, uh, in the middle area with a drive-through for the tenant here. There's some picnic tables and uh, there's a landscaping plan that I'm sure that you've seen in your, in your package that shows all the, the landscaping that we've done. Rob's worked a lot with the, with the tenants and getting tenants on, uh, on board. I know he has some exhibits uh, that we can go through and then certainly we can answer any questions that you guys may have. I'll turn it over to Rob. Okay. I'll just pass a couple of these out. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, uh, please, you're talking away from a microphone, and the friends, at, our friends at home, won't be able to hear you. Okay. Um, is this okay to put them there? That will be fine. That's all right. Except the people at home, uh, sitting in the audience can't see okay, them. But so it would be probably go. nicer if the, you yeah. put them up. I, th I don't think you really need worry. You could cover up that plan at least for the time being, because I think we all, I think nearly everybody in this town must know what Shaw's Old Shaw's Plaza looks like. I think that's a great idea. Okay, so um, pretty much what we talked about when we were first here, uh, we took kind of a, a modern new approach to the facade. We're going to basically, other than the structure itself, the existing structure, you won't recognize the property. So the existing steel, the existing structure will t stay intact. The overhang, the front of the building will all come apart and then we'll reapply the new material as you see it on these, on these uh, elevation boards. Um, we've had some pretty good success. We had, a, we had a challenge in the beginning with the site as a whole, you know, just convincing people that it was the right place to go to because there's a lot of options. And with the new um, exit um, and with the new development where Shaw's went kind of flanking both sides, you know, our first choice was Okay, well, we still think it's a good area for certain products and maybe another market in the marketplace because it seemed like that was, you know, an interest, not just to the community, but for us also. So we've traveled down that path a little bit, and we have a couple people in that, that um, arena, the market arena, but more independents than more nationals. So we're still working with them, but we've got a lot of good traction with um, some bigger tenants, some uh, fitness-type tenants, um, some... Uh, restaurant tenants, little fashion, some um, supporting uses, like everyday supporting uses, um, a bank. So, you know, we've brought some people pretty close to letters of intent. And so we're kind of at that stage right now. But a big piece of this is making sure I, we can do what we, we say we can do. And then the other piece of it, which we're in front of the um, zoning board, I believe the variant for a variance, uh, on signage. One of the biggest kind of I think feedbacks we got from all of the site visits that we've had, and we've had over 200 site visits between all the tenants that we've brought to the table, um, was the signage. Like the first thing is, where's the sign? We would get more calls on a site visit, well, where's the sign? And as you drive it and you know it, well, you know where the sign is. You know, it's at the light and it's a little kind of setback. And, and so two of the biggest points that we're going to be focusing on um, at the variance hearing is that everyone wants a sign on the back of the building. So one of the tenants that I can't really announce, but is very close, you know, unless we get that sign on the back of the building, I'm not sure we're going to get that tenant. The other thing is 
they wanted an additional pylon sign, as I talked about at the last hearing, in kind of the middle of the site, more or less, and they have to be much bigger. So we're going for much bigger signs than what's allowed, but it's not just a billboard sign. It's an architectural structure with a sign on it. So it's going to have a lot of similarities to the facade and the building and, and the materials that we're using on the sign. So when you look at it, it's going to feel like it's a piece of the shopping center, not just a big old sign. So hopefully we'll be successful there because it really is a, a key component to some of the tenants that we're talking to, um, to say, okay, look, at we, we kind of met the criteria. They have all the check boxes. Well, we've hit a lot of them, but there's a couple we still haven't accomplished. And so we're at that stage now of finishing that. If all goes well here tonight and all goes well with, with our variants, we're hoping to start sometime this summer because we think we have a good enough handle with the tenant mix that although we won't be 100% leased, we think we can get ourselves to 60 or 70% leased if we can get a couple accommodations along the way. And, and then we think if you build it, they will come kind of attitude will happen because we've had enough feedback and we've basically kind of have to take a pause sometimes to say, okay, what's the right mix? Not just getting a tenant to jump in the space because we want to keep the tenant. And, you know, Merrimack has this interesting demographics when you look at it. With income levels, it's a lot different. You know, I've, we've heard funny comments like, the income level's too high for us. Or, you know, so like, what, are you kidding me? But it, it has happened, you know. So there's, there's a, such an interesting checkbox, especially with the way the economy is with tenants today, that it's very weird how they're analyzing sites that they're thinking about. And obviously we have the issue with Nashua being so close that we can't get a lot of those tenants to either relocate or do an additional store because retail right now is struggling and people don't want to cut into certain sales that they already have that they know are on the books by putting an additional store somewhere and saying, well, look it, now we're going to have half the sales because we have two stores in a very close proximity. So we've been faced with a lot of challenges over the last six or seven months, specifically with the retail news that we hear every day. So many stores closing. And so for us, we're really methodical about, okay, long-term tenants, great financials, you've got to be all in and we're not doing it. And so we've been a little slow, but or slower than I would have liked, but I think we're approaching it the right way. So I think long-term, we're going to have a great property and a great group of tenants. And, um, and so hopefully you can support that because I think we're going to get there. You know, it's been an eyesore for a long, it doesn't look great, and it should because it's such a, I think, strong piece of real estate in a really nice location with great exposure to the street. So there's no reason for it not to be great. And I think um, hopefully we can be successful doing it. I'll take any questions. Well, we before, before we go to questions, yep. let's just ask my colleagues. We haven't actually accept this for review. Uh, can I ask if everybody's sort of generally happy with what we've been told? And are we in a position to agree that we're going to review the matter this evening? I, I'll make a motion to, um, to accept it as substantially. I'll second. Um, uh, right, the motion is to accept this matter for reviews. A motion proposed by Desiree Fault and su um, supported by Lynn. Can I have a vote on that, please? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody against? That's uh, 5 zero, zero, Zaina, for we can accept the matter for review. Okay then, folks, let's uh, open the matter for questions from the panel first. Anybody like to start? Nelson, you look ready to start. Well, I have a lot of questions. Well, uh, why don't you start with your uh, questions? I just, um, you were just talking about signs, so I'll start with that. Um, I think the signs are really more under the control of the Zoning Board. Yeah, they are the Zoning Board's real At this reference. point in time, I'm glad to hear that you're doing something with it other than a billboard. <coughs> and uh, if you can make it look nice, that would, that would be a good thing. Uh, the thing I noticed was uh, you don't have much mentioned about internal traffic flow uh, uh, regarding, and, and that ties into signs, because as I see people wanting to come to the drive through restaurant, most, a lot of the traffic comes from the north, will come from the north, and it comes in, and I think you need a little bit of directional sign to get them lined up on the west side of the plaza to get into the line in the right place without a conflicting motions, okay? Yeah, Suggestion. One, thank you. Uh, the, the actual um, pad restaurant 
on the, the, the pad restaurant closest to the entrance, the existing entrance, is not a drive through Understand. Uh, it was it, the other one I was it's, right. It's the other one I think Nelson was referring to. Yeah. Please take that away. Yes, let us look at it. Yes, <laughs> you're right. And so that's the drive through That's um, kind of the casual sit-down. But the point Nelson is making is if from the north you yep. can drive into the site, yep. so he, you're going to have to make certain the traffic is directed coming in from that northern way and yep. how it gets to the... the the, la the queue, if you like, for it's getting to the drive through It's the queue from the west. You're right. right. And, and, and because yeah. when you do it now, it is very confusing. Some, you know, even because yeah. everyone's just cutting through the parking lot. Yeah. B but I think that's a great, great point. And yeah. I think we'll probably we'll focus on all kind of directional signage like that, especially because it's going to be just new and different. And we're going to need to train people how to, you're right, go through the parking lot in a safe it. manner. Yeah. Especially now that you're putting that, those two green beds in the way, because people, including myself, <laughs> have a habit of just driving higgledy-piggledy through it. Now you're going to have to control our movements a little better. Right. I, I think you're right. And, you know, the green thing, just, I don't want to divert, but was really, a, it's going to be a fun piece, because, you know, it's a big parking lot. Can't take too much of the parking away, because obviously the tenants demand it and want it. But the way we've kind of created this drive-through and the green space and the common area, I think is going to really, you know, give the front a nice feel to it. Okay. Nelson, what else have you yeah. got for us? Well, uh, I had some questions on the, uh, the, uh, the drainage, and I think, I, I think you've answered them. I wanted to know how the drainage runoff was being reduced. And you mentioned the grassy area and an in-ground infiltration, and I gather that's going to our peer review. Is that right, Robert? No, there is, at, at present, is it, Robert? I think I'm right in saying we have not suggested it goes for peer review to CLD simply because it's an existing site and therefore it was considered not necessary by the staff. Now, if you're feeling strongly on that subject, Nelson, we'd have to take that up. But in principle, well, the, the in, un, un, understanding I have is that the, they've got a peer review for the water supply situation, but not for drainage. <coughs> Yes, okay. that's correct. Um, because it's reduced, the, the total runoff is reduced. Do we know how much is reduced by? I, I yeah. can explain some of that, Nelson. Yeah. Please, like. please sure. do. <clears throat> so with the, with the larger uh, green area that we have now, um, there's a reduction of about 11,000 <laughs> square feet in impervious cover. Um, <clears throat> and the way we've designed the drainage system is we went out and did test pits there. There's uh, obviously everybody's pretty much aware that that's a, a really good sand site uh, for infiltration. It's in the aquifer. Um, so we've designed that all the catch basins have deep sump catch basins. They're four foot. Um, so it'll remove all the sediments and things, and there's a maintenance program for them as well. Uh, it travels through, and this is about half of the parking lot, basically from the green area over to the um, to the south is the mm -hmm. area that's going to be captured for the uh, chamber system. It'll go through the series of uh, catch basins, and then it'll go into an isolator row, which was been sized, sized for the first flush. Um, and that isolator row is completely wrapped with fabric so that if any sediment, um, any kind of debris, trash gets stuck, gets captured in that isolator row. Um, once, it fill, once that isolator fills up, it drops over into weirs and spreads out through the entire uh, 60 chamber system. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been designed with like a, a two-tier treatment um, train, and basically it's the, the four-foot um, mm -hmm. sumps in the catch basins and then the isolator row. Mm -hmm. So we really didn't need to, technically we didn't need, we were reducing the runoff without doing anything, but the last time we were here we heard some mention of some drainage concerns and put some thought mm -hmm. into that. So we designed this system that's 60 chambers to help alleviate mm -hmm. that. And, and there's going to be quite a bit of infiltration that goes through that. And there's a maintenance plan that goes with this estimate? <laughs> yes, there yeah. is. It's on the last, the last page of the plan set. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now, so on the basis of that, are you, are you happy to not have this referred for a peer review? Yes, I think I'm satisfied at Thank the moment. Thank you. Yeah. And um, <coughs> the... Uh, I noticed that there was a request for an MVD review in our recommended, our, our staff has recommended that the MVD uh, do a review of the water service. And, uh, Presumably, Bill, you actually, may I just check, you did get the memo dated May 11th, 2017. From I did. 
You have it? Correct, so yes, I do. We, I was going to ask you myself, but Nelson, please keep going if you wish. Well, okay, that's okay with you guys. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be a fairly simple uh, uh, review. Uh, basically, the services exist. We're we're adding two new services for the new buildings, um, but the <coughs> the existing original service for the large buildings is going to remain the same. So there's really no change besides tapping in. Uh, with two tapping sleeves for the for the pad sites. That's why I was surprised they asked for a review. I think it's a I think it's a pretty typical uh, request that they have. If you look at, I don't want to say their boilerplate, but there's there's a couple yeah. items that they have that I'm sure they they mention on most yeah. projects. Yeah. There's there's not a lot there though. Well, if they if they've been uh, the staff are requesting a, a third party review by uh, an engineering firm of MVD's choosing, I think we have to be say that. I'm sure MBD will not sign off them giving them water unless it meets their specification. Well, no, it's just to, because there was a request that I hadn't seen often before, I wondered if there was some reason for it. Uh, and, not, uh, not that I'm I didn't aware of. Detect not... any big water usage, uh, maybe some additional sewer flow with the restaurants. Yeah. No, I, I had yeah. talked to uh, I had talked to Ron Miner before we had submitted in um, and he had mentioned that he they could help out with some fire flow testing and things like that if we if we needed that for the fire department. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we've gotten their comments yet, mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't see any problems with the <coughs> Merrimack Village District okay. comments. Uh, the water supply to this site is completely separate from the supply to the housing development to the south. At one time, these were connected one <coughs> one place, and I just wondered if the supplies were separated at the time the properties were separated or yeah I'm not sure when that happened okay that's something just to be but I'm at. sure the MVD will double well, will check it with their engineering yes, didn't review. Want them to be surprised <laughs> when, when they say they're going to shut down the water for two days it might uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> okay um, let me see there was one more thing um, I Oh yeah, the last thing I had that I noticed was the the view from Daniel Webster Highway. Uh, there is presently a wooden fence that's kind of lost its uh, youth, and uh, just that's barely. The, it's just barely a wooden fence. It's this yeah, high. yeah. It, Are we talking about the guardrail? The, well, yeah, and it looks like it's being replaced by a standard kind of guardrail. And I wondered if there was something we could do that would be more in keeping with the fence that's to the on the property to the south. If you notice, that was all. This was all one property at one time. This was a PUD, and uh, they have a fairly nice-looking plastic fence. And um, I would uh, encourage you to look at something like that, as opposed to what you've got there, which is a. Uh, guardrail. guardrail, yeah, DW Highway. Uh, but I, I, but did I not understand that you say some of your potential tenants want to see some sort of signs on the that back of the buildings facing the highway so that people can see it, or did I misunderstand you? I, th I think Nelson's talking talk about, about the, the front guardrail that's along the DW yes. Highway. Oh, oh, sorry, I thought yeah, you were meaning the back of the building, sorry. No. no. The front no, of the building. Yeah, we can look. We can look at that. Yeah, oh, that, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. We'll, we'll uh, make it look pretty. Uh, can Thank I, you. Can I but say can we? Can, can we? Have you? May I take over now? Some on the subject, since I sort of went off on a, a tangent. You mentioned that you're looking for signs on the back of the building facing the highway. Is that something that custom your potential customers, potential tenants, I should say, might want or do want? Um, well, it's not on the back. Of, we're looking for one sign closer to the highway, not on the back of the building, freestanding, closer to the highway. So up on the hill. Ah. Not 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 like Merrimack. Uh, what is it? Premium outlet field. Not which, like the premium like outlet. Premium thing. You're, outlet you're, in other words, right. you're wanting something well, not attached to the building, but considerably at the back to try and persuade people to come off and exit. It, whatever it is, 12, and come back and visit you? Well, I just think knowing that we're there, I think the problem we're having is the competition is so heavy 
and it's easy for someone to go somewhere else because they have choices when they come off the exit. But if they're looking for something specific and they see it all the time, then they know, for example, XYZ is, is, okay. is in Merrimack, and let's go there because it's right around the corner. So, and so we need to remind them constantly. So the, you're, just so I understand, and I know the signs are the ZBA's purview, yeah. but you're going to have a, the sort of, some sort of banner sign on DW, facing DW Highway for the, for the people going past that way, but you want something on the hill. Okay, but that, all right. That's correct. So I hadn't understood it, but yeah. obviously that's a ZBA discussion. Yes. Interesting. Uh, on the back of the building does you absolutely no good whatsoever because you can't see it from the highway. No. That's what I, that's you why I was confused. can't even see there's a building there. Right, that's correct. That's why I was confused, Lynn. So uh, now we know what you're trying to do, uh, okay. but that's for you when you're, with your other hat on. <laughs> All right, so is there any, any of the other matters that are covered in this memo dated May 11th that are concerning you? Um, yes, there is, a, there is a couple. Okay, um, please, please feel free. So... One that I forgot to mention when I was up there earlier is we had asked for a uh, waiver. We had requested a waiver for, for parking um, that we had submitted. And then the staff had recommended that there's a waiver from Section 7.05 D19 um, and looking for a written one, which I, I did write up. I have not submitted that, but I have that in front of me okay. if, if the board would like to see that. Uh, I do have some highlighted. One of them was the third party from, the, mm -hmm. um, from uh, MVD. Um, one relates to the uh, the sidewalk waiver that we just I talked understood. about. There also is a request from DPW for a, another chamber system, stormwater chamber system for the small uh, for the small 650 square foot building that we don't feels necessary. We've already added the one. Um, in the southern corner and we, we didn't really need to technically we didn't need to do that because we were reducing runoff um, so we felt that the an, an additional storm chamber from what we have shown on the plans um, wasn't necessary and there's also a comment that they're looking for a traffic study and we felt that that was probably um, not needed either where this is an existing facility uh, there's a signal at the property it's existed as a uh, as a supermarket. Obviously, it was a, it was a while ago. Um, we just didn't feel that that was a, a necessary. We didn't feel that there was going to be a, a a large change to what's what's going to take place. Okay. Well, we can take up those three points. Yeah. Let Let's look at the uh, traffic then first, Nelson. Oh, I had a different one. Oh, go. Uh, was, yeah. Please, please go. The on. traffic one. I would agree with their request. I think uh, what we're seeing here is going to produce less uh, uh, traffic and at the peak times that we had before, it'll sort of smooth it out a little bit with the multiple uses. I don't have a problem. With Certainly no more than they had before. No, okay. that's right, yeah. Okay, so we'll clear that item first for you, Bill. We will pass on, that there will no be, we will withdraw any request for a traffic study. That makes you feel good. Please, okay. Nelson, what else had okay, you? The other had to do with pedestrian access. And, um, yeah, I've noticed you brought a little bit of the sidewalk out and sort of stumped it off at the edge of your property there. And um, I, I know you want a waiver for the sidewalk along DW Highway. And uh, I also know that our long-term plans call for a sidewalk along DW Highway. On the other hand, this site has been built and developed. And, uh, and uh, But what I would like to see if we don't do anything along DW Highway is have some pedestrian connection available to the residential area to the south, uh, especially for those restaurants and things so that people can walk from the East Ridge, East Ridge yeah, housing development into this area, and also that they can walk at least up to Route 3, even though they don't go on Route 3. Uh, you know, it's something to, and I think there is sidewalk or pedestrian access on the other end to those uh, uh, those businesses that are there immediately adjacent. It's a bank, I think, and a, used to be a cleaner, so I don't remember what's in there now. A karate, okay, there's karate. A, there's a, a credit union. There's a credit yeah, okay, union. Credit union, that's yeah. right, yeah. Okay, so I would like consideration for pedestrian access, I guess, is the 
nutshell. Yeah. Okay. Lynn. What about pedestrian access to across the street? Horseshoe Pond is across the street. East Ridge is south. Horseshoe Pond is across the street. Th that's why I suggested that, that's what I meant to suggest by bringing it up to Route 3, bringing their sidewalk <laughs> all the way up along the access road to There's Route 3. Okay. But well, whether it's head. a striped crosswalk or, or something. Well, yeah, it's a crosswalk out there, but get people there safely, too. But Lynn, were you trying to ask for a pedestrian phase inside the traffic lights there? Was that where you were going? Well, yes, we may want that. But maybe. Uh, so I, that's I, just I just think we've got a huge complex between <coughs> Horseshoe Pond and Island Drive with a lot of residences that are right across the street. And whether it's a, a button on the lights. <coughs> or yeah. something that provides access to that residential area as well as across the, the access road to Eastridge. Well, that road is, that is a town road. Uh, it's on, under the, whatever, the, the urban compact, so we would have the right to ask for that. So is that a, that's a request, therefore. Do you feel we should add that as an item, an I just item? think a, a button on the traffic light is, is sufficient as far as I'm concerned. I think that would be appropriate, striping across the street. Yeah, the, the East Ridge, uh, the East Ridge right across from That's the, walking, but yeah, it's that, what right, Lynn's right, referring that, to. That one's, pretty, the, that one's pretty straightforward and, e, and easy yeah. to accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other one with bringing it down to the intersections, quite a bit more complicated with the signal and if there's not a pedestrian phase that's there already that needs to get added to the signal as well as conduits and pull boxes and everything underneath the um underneath the road and then it needs to be um you know there will have to be uh changes with the there will have to be a designated crosswalk to go across mm -hmm. there obviously um and that'll get into probably get into the detection loops that are there already um so there's a fairly large undertaking um to, to do that and then once we get across the street um, there's not sidewalk there's not sidewalk there now and the other thing that complicates it a little bit is if we have a, um, a sidewalk we're now going to have curbing with and we're going to need closed drainage because right now a sheet flows off into the into the swale that's on the on the corner of the intersection so there's um, there's 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 quite a bit to that um, request I'm, like you you to think about I'm, I'm, I'm not going to make a judgment on that. I, I, I mean, yeah. what is that? You know, it's your calls. You, you've raised the issue. Do you want to push it, or do you want to say, okay, we understand what the, the applicant is saying, and we'll, we'll let it fly? I guess I'd like more detail on what the problem is. Well, uh, we'd have to look into what, the, right now, the existing signal that's, yeah, cost is. That's that's probably a major factor, but um, it all boils down to cost. But the complication that it has is the existing signal. I don't. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that existing signal, so I don't know exactly how Either it's how it's laid yeah. out. Um, yeah. I know it has been there for for quite a while. Um, but if there's not a pedestrian phase set up for that signal already, there's a, there's quite a bit of construction that needs design and construction that needs to take place for a pedestrian phase with conduits pull boxes and right now the way that that's set up it doesn't have uh, a crosswalk for it so when you do a crosswalk you have to you have to place the crosswalk and then make sure that the car stands back 10 feet from the from the crosswalk yeah, to, for pedestrian safeties and that then gets into there's detection loops when you pull up to the when you pull up to the uh to the light it triggers if there's nobody there it'll trigger and it'll turn green those detection loops that are under the pavement there will now need to be slid back they'll be too far forward um, for the signal and then um, besides that there's probably other issues with the signal that I'm that I'm not thinking of right now but the other concern is that when you bring a sidewalk down we're gonna have an elevated sidewalk with with curbing where there's not curbing right now so there'll be additional drainage for that intersection um, that'll need to take place because the water right now flows off the edge of the pavement into the drainage swale. I don't think that's our property. It, it's not our property as well, but well, it's not even our property. Yeah, actually, Bill, I'm going to back off a little bit because 
visualizing it now, there's quite a distance between that traffic light and that side access road to Horseshoe mm. and Island, and yeah, that's probably inappropriate. It's about 200 yards. Yeah, it's, it's we'll, a good distance, we'll, so I'm we'll, gonna... We'll tie in the pedestrian piece from the housing. We'll yeah. Figure out how to do that the right way because it's complicated. Because but, that's, but that's but that's that's really the, very easy. That that's just is, yeah. striping in perhaps a bit of pavement. Yeah, we'll it was the one for I the island. We'll do something better than that, though. The right? one, well, yeah, you know, because I think in it, terms of the, the overall is scheme. Not reasonable, so I'm, okay. That's yeah. We got so we're going to let it rot fly. Yeah. Okay. As far as I'm concerned. If not now, we'll never get anything along DW yeah. Highway. That's. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about access across the street. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm willing to let the access across the street go, but I mean, if we're talking sidewalks, we have to start somewhere eventually. Yeah. Well, but I, I'm not trying to prejudge anything, but we do have further in the agenda the proposal for going, which the town councillors agreed last Thursday for us to go to the NRPC to do an overall study for traffic and pedestrian ways all the way along DW Highway. I think it would be better leaving it but on but probably saying to these people that if if we get to the stage of NRP NRPC saying this is where we want sidewalks they have to agree that we uh, they will make available some of that frontage if necessary would that sort of that Nelson would be, that would be helpful yes mm -hmm. do you basically to understand we are we we we're very keen on sidewalks in this town but we don't always get them because every time we try and do anything, we fall foul of somebody. And up to now, the DOT has been very negative, <coughs> saying, well, unless there is an overall plan, they won't agree to it, even though this particular bit of road is, is a town road under the urban compact scheme. Now, the town council on Thursday approved us going to NRPC to do a study and a recommendation. So what would I think I'm saying to you is that if that comes up and they say we're going to put a sidewalk all the way along there, we're going to ask for your cooperation in giving up and making any minor changes that may be necessary to enable a sidewalk to go across the front of your site. And so is that an easement or is that a... Is that it would be an easement. An easement. Would I be right, Robert? Yes. Could be, yeah. 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 So we want we want the you to effectively understand that if we ask for an easement, you're granted. Yeah, no, we have no problem with that. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, shall we take up the waiver on sidewalks first? Somebody going to make a motion? I won't make a motion to waive it, but I'll probably. Go I won't either. <laughs> So we can have a vote. I'll make a motion um, that we waive requirement for sidewalks. Uh, can I have a second? I'll second that. that. Understanding what you have just said, going forward after we do a, a comprehensive review, <coughs> um, I'm not going to require them right now, but I'm going to hold your feet to the fire that if we want them, you're going to cooperate. Well, we're, we're let's make it a part of the motion. Is yes, that, I that think that should be part of the motion. Yeah, that That's what Lynn has done by, by that they grant an easement That's what I just did. for futures. Yeah, no. okay. and I will allow it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, on the basis of sorry, uh, strict conformity. Um, sorry, proposed strict conformity proposed an unnecessary hardship to the applicant, and the waiver would not be contrary to the spirit or an intent of regulations. May I have a, a show of hands on that? Those in favor of the motion? Those against? That's. Sorry. Those in favor? I'm in, I'm You're, in favor. Yeah, I got, I got you. Cause you <laughs> so that's 4 1 0, Zina. Tom? 5 1 0. I beg your pardon. Tom, Tom did not vote in favor. It's 4 1 0. Four one zero. I think five one zero. Five one zero. One two three. Yeah, five four, one zero. Five. Yes. Sorry, I can't count. It's the English counting. <laughs> More jokes about the English. Um, now the other thing is easy. they want a waiver on the parking regulations um, because they are actually cutting back on the number of parking spaces that are currently there and which were part of the original site, despite the fact of adding the restaurants. Um, 
it does say that they are reducing the impervious area, and that obviously therefore means they are reducing the amount of parking. Uh, so they want a waiver on that. Can I have a motion? What? Can you define What's what they're the asking for? Um, it's in the piece of paper here, and, I, and I've read it. I can't remember exactly. I mean, if we're reducing from 300 to 7, I'm not in favor of it. But no, no, okay. sorry. <laughs> the numbers are in the, are in the memo. What, what did you sure, ask I can, for? I can explain that a little bit. I have, please, I have. Please explain it to us. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so right now we don't know the exact tenants. The best, the best um, guess that we have for the exact tenants, putting them into the parking calculations for Merrimack, um, there is required 478 parking spaces right now currently there isn't 478 parking spaces uh, proposed we show 359 parking spaces so there's a reduction of 120 spaces, 120 from, spaces. What's, from what's in the Merrimack regs um, and there's there's some um, there's some reasons for that um, you know there's going to be varied hours of usage depending on what the what the tenant actually is and uh, the Merrimack uh, regulations for site um, parking is pretty conservative. Uh, I think some of the I think some of the other properties that you own are are similar to this and doesn't have a parking issue. Yeah, we I think on the parking front, the two things we wanted to try to you know, when we were listening loud and clear that you wanted to create some more green space, so we wanted to try to do that with this center courtyard area, which took a lot of parking, especially with the little drive-through that we did. And rather than put a bigger drive through and take up uh, more parking, we came up with this little kind of kiosk drive through to accomplish both our goals. One is adding another kind of element to the front of the site to break up that kind of just mass of retail in that parking lot as exists today. And then the, and the combination of making sure that we have enough parking to please the tenants. And by this formula, we do because you know it's really t a lot of it's tenant driven. Unless you have a supermarket, which you know people like to say six to one, seven to one today, it's tenant driven. And we're not going to have a big supermarket. And so, but we even went a little bit on the higher side on the calcs because we said, look, at we may get one or two more restaurants than we thought we were from the beginning, and that's a heavier traffic count than non restaurants. I don't think we're going to end up there. So we went kind of on the conservative side. I think we're going to do better than that, but I didn't want to say that. I want to go on the heavier side, because if we can get one or two family restaurants, I think that's going to, again, draw more people every day to the shopping center, especially if it, they're at the caliber that we would like them for. So the, the calc works for us, works for the tenants. We don't think we need more than that. You know, a lot of times we do a shared parking when the site's a little bit bigger. And even, you know, with a little less than a 4.1, it works. I mean, there'll be some days maybe it'll be really busy, which we hope, knock on wood, um, but our numbers consistently have worked at this level. Is, is there space in the rear of the building to add parking if you need to? Um, not behind the building, but we did add some extra parking on the side. I'm just thinking of the building. What I've seen... For employees, you mean that kind right, of thing? Right, when, yeah. when it was active before, the employers will all say, okay, just park way over close to the road so you're not parking close to the building. If okay. you could park them on the edge, on the back, around, not right in front where you're using retail parking. It's pretty uh, steep back you know, there. Yeah, I know steep. it is. We have a lot of ledge. I haven't but been around, so. But in today's, you know, tenants demand a lot. So, for example, just to give you an example, to say it's not that we don't want to create more parking. We have enough parking. There's too much parking there now, unless it was a supermarket. But what happens when you get a tenant, you have to give a lot of concessions up. And one of the concessions for traffic flow to get their trucks around the building, we have like a no-build area. So when you look at, you know, the, t the two or three tenants we really want, which we think we're going to get, we basically have, have to agree to a no-build area around the whole building and basically in front of the whole site. Okay. You know, so, so it is what it is, but we can't. We just, you know, where parking is, especially in the back of the building, the ledge is pretty steep in those areas. And we were having a problem getting a big truck around the whole building, a 70, I think it was a 75 67. foot. 67. 67, and so we had to go down to the lower truck, at which they agreed to, or else we wouldn't get the tenant. Because even though, you know, I kept saying, well, Shaw's did it, you've got to be able to do it. But the swing doesn't really work. And so in order to do this little section to make the bigger truck work, it was about $180,000, just that one section. 
And we said, look, we can't do that. We have to go to the smaller truck. And so they said, fine, we can deal with that. So we have a lot of ledge behind the building. I think we have pretty much as much, much parking as we can fit on the site based on this, this type of layout. Yeah. Now, just one thing I'd like to point out. You recognize that there's no parking on Route 3, so you're going to have to make it work for your tenants. Okay. If it doesn't work, you're going to have to do something. And it, you know, it, I, I think the thing I can comfort you with is that we're not going to get the tenant, especially in today's world with these tenants, unless they feel it's going to I mean, We can say, yeah, it's going to work, it's going to work. Tenants aren't coming. You know, they, we have to say in each lease that, these are going to be the parking. This is how much it's going to be. They sign off on it before, you know, they even come. Mm -hmm. And so we've kind of went through that drill with them, and we came up with this balance of where we're at today. We just didn't say, okay, let's just go for this. It was input from the tenant, input from us, what we've had been doing in our other shopping centers, and we think that combination works pretty well. We're not doing a big supermarket. If we were doing a big supermarket, I would, I would agree with you. I would say, you know what, all the parking was there. We probably need that and some more, by the way, if we got a couple of the supermarkets yeah. we were trying to get. Yeah. Because, you know, we're doing a supermarket now up in North Conway, and uh, I had to go six to one, yeah. which is unheard of, you know, for that kind of an area because it's tourist-driven. But they wouldn't do it. The <coughs> supermarket wouldn't do it unless I guaranteed them that much parking. Well, I'm just going Go on, what the fallback is. It's, it's on you it's on to make it work. Right. And the only thing I would add, though, is that in times of winter, you are going to, and I think we should perhaps put this on the, on the approval, that you have to understand that you can't necessarily s store snow on that site. You're going to have to truck the snow off because in the past, that, that quite large piles of snow were left in, r r lying around that parking lot. You won't be able to do that. Well, I, I have no problem with it because our tenants in their leases are making, are making sure we don't pile snow in front of the building. Okay. All right, so there you go. So I'm happy. In and, the parking lot. In the parking lot. Well, though. not, you know. You're going to sure have to truck it off storage site. storage in certain areas. Yeah, we do have snow storage. We on have two, yeah, I don't want to see right. snow storage ones, yes. where you have parking delineated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, we agree with that. We're not going to dump okay. it where there's okay. parking. But we're going to dump it around the building where we have snow storage. Right, right now. They, but you, but people in, in the past, yeah. they, they've had a contract, the, the site owner had a contractor who just bulldozed them. He, he, not he, just here. Oh, no, in no, a no, lot of every, every sites, month. but, but right. we normally say this. There's no snow parking. You in, can't in the have parking large area. piles of snow well, the, the idea on that is parking lot. Don't yeah, uh, where there's parking. Don't put snow. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Which, which the previous people. All right. Didn't then do. can I have a motion on the subject of parking waiver? Then also move that we <clears throat> grant the waiver subject to strict conformity would pose an unnecessary hardship to the applicant and the waiver would not be contrary to the spirit or intent of the regulations. Can I have two uh, second. 359 Down yeah. to the 359 yeah. spaces. Yeah, specified. And that was seconded by De De Desiree. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I, ha can I have a show of hands? All in favor of agreeing to the parking waiver? Mm -hmm. So that's one, two, three, four, six, zero, zero. Which includes the fact that there's no storage space in parking uh, that I, but, but Robert, I know, was noting that and has added it to the list. Is there anything else that the, the panel would like to question? I, I wanted to uh, make then in which case I do we, Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was, gonna make, I was just going to make a comment. I noticed on your, your renderings that you showed, you have um, like landscaping shown mm -hmm. kind of up towards the front of the building, but your site plan doesn't show any green, at least not the one here on mine. So I like this. I think it's nice to break up the building because, yeah, you've made the building, you know, uh, Architecturally, with the materials, you've made it break it up, but it's still one big long strip mall, right? It'll it'll be a little bit individual, but it, it's just really nice when you soften it a little bit with with landscaping. In, in front of the buildings, or are you saying that island? Like I'm talking about the green right in front of Lotus right here, or yeah, the, uh, the collection that that stuff's not showing on your site plan that you're presenting to us. Not the one us. on the right, the colored one. The colored one, top, top. there. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah, yeah. Well. You're, you're right. We don't show that, but we are doing that. So um, I don't really know. We don't show it in our site plan, but that's what our plan is. It may not be exactly like that, but whether it's planters, we, we tend to like to do more planters mm -hmm. than okay. planting in the sidewalk. No. We'll buy that. You know, so, that's okay. yeah, that's what we tend to like to do more. I mean, we are going to do some trees. You know, these were just illustrations of how we wanted to feel. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Um, you're selling us on the illustrations. We want it to feel like oh, that, right. too. And well, I think we'll it's going to look like that, but I don't think we'll have 
you know, exactly, you know, it's going to feel like that and we'll look like that. We just haven't figured plants. that out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we do do more planters than stationary things because yeah. of weather, winter, take them in and out, decorations, Christmas time, mm -hmm. celebrations, holidays, and we decorate that piece of it. Yeah, that makes sense. Planters are fine, Rob, just we want some green in front of the buildings, okay. not just in the okay. little parking lot. Got it. Okay. Commiserate to your renderings here. Like Desiree, that much green. are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. In that case, um, I'm going to throw the motion open to the floor. And any members of the general public wish to comment on the plan? Thank you, sir. Please, would you gentlemen like to sort of move we'll aside or let him have let him have the floor or the microphone? I don't mind how you. Thank do. you. Please, I'm, please I'm, state I'm, your name first, I'm, and don't forget you must you sign on the pad to. before you when you've finished. Okay, uh, I'm Pete Hinkle, uh, One Pine View Drive, right across the street. And um, first of all, I'd like to say it's nice to see somebody to take over that property and redevelop it so that it doesn't sit there vacant and deteriorate like the Merrimack Hotel did. Uh, I do have a, a concern, though, and um, it may be too late. You've already voted on the parking waiver. But uh, when Shaw's was still there, uh, they applied for permission to expand. And it's been a long time now, but I seem to recall one of the objections was that there wasn't enough parking space. So now we have two pad sites, more building square footage, we have a green area, and uh, we're asking for a waiver on the parking because they've re reduced the number of parking sites. And also, as far as snow storage, um, I see the piles of snow there every day during the winter time, and they get really huge. And that's a lot of snow to realistically expect them to truck out of there. So I'm, I'm wondering, you know, since there wasn't enough parking for Shaw's, with all these changes and loss of more parking space, how is there enough parking now? So I'll sit down and li listen to you no. answer that. Thank well, you. I understand the question. I understand what you're raising, sir. Would you want to comment? Sure. I, I, mean, yeah, I think it relates to one of the things that I said earlier that, you know, Shaw's is a supermarket. It was, had a, it was big. Supermarkets tend to get more traffic during the day at certain peak times and generally more cars and, and, and need more parking than your traditional um, retail tenants. And so, and because we have a mixture of just not a supermarket, other uses, you know, you're going to have different people coming at different times. Some people, if we have a couple of restaurants, it would be maybe more night and afternoon. Some people for shopping during the day. So they, so the, so although Shaw's may not have had all the parking they needed, I think that's traditionally the case when it comes to supermarkets anyway. Um, and so we, you know, obviously we looked at that. Um, so I think that was on the parking. We talked about the snow storage a little bit that we're willing to take the snow away and not put snow where the parking is. So I think we addressed that a little bit. Yeah. And his third question was? No, those are really the are questions. Really the have we got ones. enough, have you got enough space? And B, he didn't want to see the snow piles. We'd already said we don't want to see the snow piles just as well as you don't want to see them, sir. Yeah. So, Mr. Hankel, so I think if they're saying that they're not going to have a big supermarket there, um, I certainly can only say they're taking the risk if they let their tenants down their tenants will walk away very quickly so I don't think I want to change what we've all voted on but um, unless everybody <coughs> else wants to okay if Mr. Henger, if you want to have a further act please uh, well I'm just wondering if there's a restriction on what they can have for tenants like could you restrict uh, having a supermarket or something so that in future years, you know, after this is forgotten, somebody else comes along and they're managing the property and they leave space to a supermarket. The strict answer is it's retail. We can't actually say who or what goes in there. We have no rights. We're not the tenant. We're not the owners of the site. So the simple answer is no, we can't restrict them. I suspect, given what has been offered to us, that nobody's going to, no supermarket, and I'm thinking of the big three, Market Basket, Shaw's, presumably Stop and Shop or Hyford's, given their, they would probably say there isn't the parking, we're not going in there. That's the best offer I could suggest. They've already said that, hmm? right. They've They've already already said said that, that. a half a dozen times over the years. And, and, and then on top of that, any kind of site plan change you're making to a commercial plan, you have to come back before planning board anyway. So we're, we're going to review it because most likely they're going to make some site plan change. Everybody always does when they come back. 
So I think you can rest assured we'll have the matter covered uh, some way. Thank you. And does anybody else in the general public wish to make a comment? Please, madam, come and join us. Um, hi, I'm Virginia Heald, his daughter. <laughs> um, Your name, please? Virginia Heald. Yeah, okay. Uh, you're making some incentives to some new retail uh, tenants at this point. Are you going to continue those tenants? What I would like to see is very little turnover. Um, I think you're in a, in a really good position at this time with the hotel right across the uh, highway coming in, especially to have restaurants. You'll get a lot of, we will get, I think, more some more traffic from the south coming uh, across the, uh, under the highway uh, from the other side, from uh, over Continental. You're talking about coming down Greeley Street. Right, Greeley Street, that's it. Um, but I'd like to see uh, as little turnover as possible. So what kind of incentives are you, providing to these new tenants and are going to continue those five, so ten so years later. <laughs> you know, like I, if, if you do put a B-dubs in there, I want to see them stay there for ten years. You know, we do too. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're, you know, we're, uh, the whole idea is, you know, for us is to, and I think I said a little, touched on this a little bit, we're taking our time and, and getting the right tenants. You know, there's a lot of tenants that want to do these, they call them pop-up stores, you know, and they're there for a, like a Halloween store. You know, we're not looking at that. We're not doing those stores. So we're taking our time. I think when we announce the first group of tenants, which we hope to be in the next 30 or 60 days, because we hope to start this sometime this summer, I think you'll be kind of impressed with, you know, they're all long-term leases. There's no short leases. So that's, that's the goal. That's our, our model Are is... Are there going to be percentages of the uh, income that the, is going to be paid back to, to the... Uh, to the Management company. That's a, oh, I, that's I can't tell you all my. This is no. something we could. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're, you're getting incentives. you're getting into matters that yeah. cannot concern oh, us right. or concern okay. you. Never mind, scratch that. Yeah, no, I anyway. can't tell you all my secrets, <laughs> but but I can tell you that um, we are spending a lot of money on this project. We'll be into this for probably seven or eight million dollars, and we're not going to just take on a tenant for a month or two. So it's, it's, you know, spending a lot of money here. And um, other than ripping the building down, you're getting a brand new shopping center. And I think if you look at the th kind of things we do, um, you can go to settlersgreen.com, it's online, a little plug. Um, you'll see that we take our time and we try to do the right thing and we really focus on the tenants. You know, we're not, we don't overfinance things. We build things out of our own money. We take our time and we try to get the right group of tenants. Well, then how and it's not always successful, but we do our best to do that. How long do you think this project would, would take start to finish? We're going to be open uh, if, our, if we have success here and we have success at the, at the um, zoning board. Um, we hope to be open the first quarter of next year. That's our goal. First quarter of next year. So we're looking to deliver space to tenants sometime after January of 2018. That's the goal. Which I'm sure most of us in this town will be delighted to see something happening on that site. Yes. At least that's my personal opinion. We would too. We're doing our best to do that. You know, things, sometimes, you know, tenants, there's a lot of pieces to it, as we all know. Okay. Is anybody else from the general public want, please, come forward. Uh, oh, sorry. You, sorry, sir. I didn't I realize. Know, you, you, I didn't realize you were. Not easy to see. So go on. <laughs> please, please, please have your say. Bill, good to see you again. Good John McDonald, 19 Point View Drive. And Bill Davidson is a very competent engineer, and we've dealt with Bill on other projects. So it's nice to see you again. Nice seeing you. And I'm glad something's happening here. Um, <clears throat> we've lived here 28 years. Uh, we remember the Shaws, and we remember it going. We remember everything going. So it's really nice that somebody's taken their time and effort uh, that you see here to bring something good to the area. So I'm here to support the project. What I would like to encourage, much of what Bill talked about, the underground storage, we're concerned about runoff, obviously, because what's on the other side, of the bottom of that page, is Horsham Pond. I understand. And whatever runs down into the into the in, into the catch basins eventually finds its way into horseshoe pond and what's used for uh, landscaping what's used for fertilizer all has an impact on the pond and since the pond is very sensitive and I know many of you are very sensitive to it um, with all that goes on um, 
I would suggest that, that the, the plans looked at very closely about runoff. I'm real happy to hear about this, the, uh, uh, the underground storage, um, and the, the silt uh, stoppage. I would also uh, suggest that since this was built in the eight, I believe the 70s, um, and the standards of um, water gas separators, for instance, at loading docks have really um, um, changed since then. And I don't see anything that you're doing on your loading docks that might suggest that you're going to be able to pick up the water gas store, uh, separator that should be in, in 2017 well, there, uh, designs. There are in the in the recommendations that they're talking about various separators that have got to be attached to the restaurant grease separators. Yeah, grease separators are yep. on, outside, but we're talking about uh, one of the one of the areas that things happen a lot is when loading docks get um, a spillage from a truck. It goes into the catch basin, and then if it doesn't oil water, if there's not a separator for the, the gas to go to. Um, it ends up in the aquifer, it ends up in, in there. So I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this forward to see what, I mean, I'm not talking about anything you don't know, Bill, I know. Um, what's, what the plan is for that end of the building, obviously behind the building, what, what's gonna happen there? Is it just what's there now, or, or are we gonna increase, improve the, uh, uh, the ability to separate any, any gas spillage that might occur? You like me comment? Sure. Yeah, I think I, I think the proposal that we have right now is that the loading dock is uh, is planning to remain the way that it is. Um, there was some some uh, separate recommendations when we went to the conservation commission last week that uh, did have a lot of comments on the fertilizers. Um, so the fertilizers that we were showing were a were a typical um, fertilizer that's that's commonly used. They asked for us to uh, make some changes to that with the um, slow release nitrogen and, and low phosphate. So we are planning on doing that. They also had recommendations. I have a, an email from the uh, Conservation Commission. And they were talking about trying to minimize the use of uh, salt and de-icing. Well, that's, uh, that's when yep. you'd get that. Yep. Any time you go to the Con Conservation Commission, they'll always ask for low, 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 uh, better fertilizer and low salt use for clearing. Yep. Um, and then the other thing that they had mentioned was the native plantings and uh, greenscape. So I think the fertilizer issue we have taken care of from, from past with the Conservation Commission, um, but there wasn't any plans for, for any upgrades on the, on the loading dock from what it is right now. Okay. okay. Yeah, I appreciate, Thank you. appreciate your time. Thank you. Madam, sorry having stalled you. Please, please come forward. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't, don't. Just say what you want. Uh, take it out of the... Oh, you could do that. How's that? That's fine. Good? My name is Giselle Scully, and I own the property directly next to the plaza, which uh, is 370 DW Highway. Um, it currently has two tenants, Northeast Credit Union and a martial arts academy. That's right. As you know, we share that parking lot for access. So customers going to our building actually go through the Shaw's Plaza. My question... Um, Talk, talk to the microphone. Oh, sorry. Um, so my question is, as the construction phase starts and is ongoing, what kind of access will our tenants have since they rely on that parking lot for, for their customers? Um, you know, we'll be full access. We're not going to, you know, we'll, if we have work going on, we'll make sure there's always, you know, full access to, your, to their facility. I mean, I think one of the things we hope is that we slow those people down a little bit because mm -hmm. I've been I've noticed that it's kind of like a race car, you know, driving into the into well, it's the. A, it's a straight shot yeah, now. So, so yeah. hopefully that's going to change and slow down a little bit. But I think during the construction period, um, we will you know have people there. It'll be mapped out properly. Make sure if you have access all the time, especially if and I haven't read all the easements and how the access works there. But wherever your easement is. We'll make sure that I mean, if we have to do work there, we'll slide it over. You know, we'll have we'll have we have people on the site. Right. It's not going to be I'm not going to be out there on a truck, trying to tell people what to do. We'll have a crew, and you know, we'll coordinate with you. Okay. Very so good. that that's really the point. Good coordination. Good coordination. Yep. You know, so good. so long as the tenants have access, I think that's really their primary concern. Everybody's thrilled that you guys are are coming on. So, um, 
they, they were just questioning how they were going to actually have their customers access the, the building. You know, I think I, I think to comfort everyone, once we kind of get on the site, we'll make sure we put everyone together and talk it through, and we'll have a plan and show oh, you good. the plan and timing of like when things happen and all that. So we'll make sure we give you that. Okay, great. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Does anybody else? Yes, sir. Please come again. Uh, I'm Pete Hinkle again for the record. Uh, I have two questions, uh, I guess, related to the highway. Uh, first of all, if in connection with this project, is there going to be a widening of the highway that would impact the greenway that parallels the Horseshoe Pond condominium properties? Uh, they're not impacting the highway in any shape or form. Okay. Um, second thing, uh, it's really difficult getting out of Horseshoe Pond during busy times of the day, and uh, you're kind of taking your life in your hands sometime. And it could uh, help if we could have some synchronization of the traffic lights down at, uh, uh, well, up where the uh, shopping center is, and then uh, the other one down to the south, so that you give a, a break in the traffic and other people coming out of Horseshoe Pond and off of the island can get out there onto the street. Well, I can give you the answer to that in the fact that the Greeley street lights are under the control of the DOT, Stay. and if and I've tried when when the um, when we were doing some work associated with the development of the new shores up there, I sitting on this board tried to get the DOT to agree to synchronising traffic lights, and the answer was no way, Jose. And the problem you've got is one set of traffic lights, which is the one by their site, is under the control of Merrimack, and the, the Greeley Street lights are under the control of DOT. God bless us. Have you gone to any of your state reps to uh, well, ask them you to give you some help the up state in Concord? To take an interest, but we, we, we don't see they, that. They have addressed it, and the answer from DOT was no. not going to change. Yeah. Okay. Go, right. It goes along with the tolls, I think, probably, but don't, don't, don't right. let's introduce yeah. that. We're working on it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else want to add anything? Yes, madam, please at the back. Come and join us. I'm Jean Wiseman and Horseshoe Pond, and I'm curious about the kind of lighting that you guys are planning, how bright, because, we, as you probably realize, we have a muffler shop right across from us, which is lit up like a Christmas tree all the time, banging, drilling, seven days a week. And because we're kind of in a bowl, horseshoe pond, the last few buildings, you see the lights, you hear the noise all the time. I'm just curious if you're going to light up like New York City or it's going to be a little, and pe people on S Eastridge, too, face your complex. How bright that complex is well, going to be. Well, can I give you the first half of the answer is that the town ordinance requires that the lighting is all shielded for downward look and there must be no spillage outside the Mitchell area. So I'm, I know what you're talking about as far as the muffler shop. Yeah, it's right but on the street. Yeah, I understand so that problem. But they will not. They will be required to conform with the, the town's lighting standards, which will be checked by everybody before they go ahead. But they, if they want to add to that, please feel free. Uh, we, we have designed it in uh, in conformance with the with the uh, town of Merrimack regs. Are you going to have huge street lights? No, going they're not as tall. Or? They're not as tall as what exists right now. They're not. They're not. Okay. No, there's they're smaller lights. I, I believe they're tw the ones that are out there right now are very tall. Yeah. Um, I believe if you want, I can check and see what the height is on them. I think okay. it's Which, 20, I, I, I think don't think feet. the last building is affected by that, point. especially in the summer with the foliage on the trees. But in the winter, when it's down, we, we you can see the muffler shop like right in your kitchen window at night. It's it's there now. Where you know some people are further down than I am, and they may be affected by. Kind of, you know, really bright light. So I'm just curious. But how I, ha bright I, yeah. be. And we can't do anything about the muffler shop. I'm we sorry. can't touch the muffler shop, but we we no. will certainly ensure that the. It was a hell of a place to put one, whoever you know put well. it there. But it's, <laughs> it's there. And we we live with it. Don't it's shoot just, the, this planning board. We I didn't know, do it. <laughs> but uh, just to avoid more insult to injury, I'm just curious how bright it's going to be. Twenty-five. And like I said, in the summer, I don't think it'll be as much of a problem as once all the foliage is down and you can see it. 
the lady. But we insist if you if you I mean if you go and look at the um, what happened up at Merrimack outlets, even though they initially didn't con well they did conform to the town standards at the request of the tenants and the street below them, they put in further shielding and that okay. would be something the the town would work with the applicant to make certain it happened. Okay, great. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay then, I'm going to close the public hearing. Is there anything else from any member of the panel? If not, I'll entertain a motion. All right. <laughs> I'll make a motion we approve the plan with the conditions uh, previously uh, agreed to and with, in accordance with the memorandum from uh, Timothy Thompson dated uh, May 11th, 2017. Can I ask for a second? Didn't he say he had a couple of issues? Well, we've, a we've added a couple of issues. The, the I kind of got lost because he was rapid fire running through. I know you struck the traffic study required. The were there any other conditions gone. that you were looking to have stricken? Um, I believe that, didn't get discussed? that they removed the traffic study, the chamber system for the smaller building. Um, which yeah, which yeah, one that was wasn't that? Well, we don't have a chamber system, but the, they were asking, DPW no, is so, asking for it. Right, so, but this is the official the, condition. Off, that's off the limit, the only thing that's been struck in was a traffic study. Okay. Because if there's anything in here, it's got to be adhered to. Like oh, no, the, no, the MVD, the MVD is going to go exactly according to what's been specified in the, in the staff memo with their consultant. Yeah, so there was the two waivers. Yeah, uh, of course, oh, the, yeah. Two yeah. Yeah. the two waivers. Um, the two waivers. The traffic study, and then the um, they had a request for an additional chamber system. Yeah, well, that, that's a request, but it's not yeah. what the motion that's just refers yeah. to the May 11th memo. What what number is that on your memo? Um, that is 9D. The last part of 9D. They're taking out 9G on page uh, five of six. 9G. 9D. Oh, yeah, 9D yeah. is the one he was and saying, though. Just the line above the drainage area. Okay. Uh, yeah, chamber. 9G. Yeah. yeah. Is there, do I have a second for Nelson's memo? I'll second it, but I just want to make, clarify that um, the Conservation Commission comments, I want those incorporated in. Right now, it just says recommendations. It, it listed on there vaguely. I just want to make it clear that I'd like them included. <laughs> that we can agree. That's the con the recommendations. The conservation commission will be added to the notes, and the co the applicants already indicated his willingness to go along with them. Fine. Okay. Fine. Thank you. So the motion is proposed by Mr. Disco and seconded by Ms. Desiree Falk. Anybody else want to raise any objections? Can I have a show of hands? All those in favour, say aye. 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 Those against, say nothing. Nobody. So it's. I'm abstaining. You're, oh, six, that's uh, 501 with Mr. Joe Haxo. Oh, I can never get a name. Danik. Mr. Danik. Uh, abstaining. Um, and personally, and this is me, not necessarily everybody else, I can say welcome to Merrimack because I'm delighted to see what you're doing. <laughs> and. and I'm just saying, I, the only reason I abstained is because I wasn't here for the full presentation, so I, I didn't get the overview. I, I appreciate you coming, and the, the opportunity that I did see sounds great, and uh, I'm sure we'll have a great relationship. You, I don't so think you, you missed much, actually, Tom. All right, with that, thank you. I thank hope you. I have thank managed you. to thank keep you all yeah. going in order, and I'm very happy to give the job back to my chairman. <laughs> A lot of interest in it. It was a good, good Mr. project. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, you're right. Remember the chairman. <laughs> Just on the last one, there were a couple of issues that they agreed to look into, uh, which I didn't include in my motion. I well, should have. What were the issues? And they were, had to do with uh, looking at the internal signage to make traffic flow. They, well, you made that as a point, yes. Yeah, but uh, Rob, Rob made note of that. that was one of the Rob's made a note. Yeah. Did you catch that? Did you have no okay. okay, and there was... Um, Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you to move the conversation out in the hallway so we can continue our meeting? There was one other one, Robert, that, that I brought up, and he said he would look... Oh, I told him to look at these uh, pedestrian walkways through there, and they agreed to connect pedestrians to... Yeah. 
And that was. Okay. Rob's got, Rob, you brought that down. Just didn't get into my motion. And okay. I, yeah, I think the applicant can agree to that. Okay, Mr. Chairman. You okay with that, Bob? Rob? Item four on the agenda is Edgebrook Heights LLC, Robert. Wigston Properties LLC, and Q. Yeah. Peter Nash, 1987 Revocable yes. Trust One. As the co-applicants and co-owners, this is a request for consideration of reinstatement, extension of final approval of an application for a conditional use permit to permit a future mixed-use development consisting of retail, office, multifamily, residential, and assisted living. Parcels are located at 137, 39, 55, and an unnumbered parcel along DW Highway in the I-1 Industrial Aquifer Conservation, Plod Aquifer Conservation and Flood Hazard Conservation Districts. Tax map 1E, lot 4-1, 4-2, and tax map 2E, lot 6, 2, 7, and 8. And I have a letter from the applicant requesting that we continue this item until our meeting of June 20th, 2017. What's the rule of the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. We grant the request of the applicant to continue the matter to, to June the 20th, 2017 at 7 p.m. in this room with no further notice to abide us. Is there a second? second? Second by Lynn. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Let's see. We're seven now, seven zero zero. Uh, so that brings us to item five on our agenda, which is Hainer Swanson Inc. and Stanley Elevator Company Inc. as the applicants, and nine Henry Clay Drive LLC as the owner. And this is a review for acceptance and consideration of final approval of a site plan for a 9,800 square foot warehouse expansion with associated site improvements. The parcel is located at 9 Henry Clay Drive in the I-1 Industrial and Offer Conservation Districts. Tax map 2D, lot 41-2. Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? Uh, what I distributed tonight in the pile of papers that you got at your chair was a um, revised, and I'm actually not so sure the original made it in your packets after uh, looking at it, but you've got a, a revised waiver request letter from Hainer Swanson that has four waiver requests outlined inside of it. There's a waiver request, Mr. Chairman. Here. Got it. Okay. I got it. Okay. Alistair grabbed all my stack of stuff over no, here. No, busy being in charge. He always does that. Okay, so we Where do have a new correspondence with the waiver request. Um, with that, please introduce yourself and tell us about the project and um, when we get to the appropriate time, go through your waiver request. Okay. Well, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. For the record, my name is Tom Zajac. I'm a civil engineer with Hainer Swanson in Nashua. I'm here tonight representing Stanley Elevator. Also with me here tonight is uh, Mr. Neil Hussey from Stanley Elevator. Uh, we're here seeking uh, application acceptance and final approval for a site plan for a proposed 9,800-square-foot uh, warehouse expansion located at their current site at 9 Henry Clay Drive. I'd just like to provide a brief summary of the project and then we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. The subject site is located at 9 Henry Clay Drive, uh, map 2D, lot 41-2. It's about 6.3 acres located in the I-1 industrial zone and the Aquifer Conservation Overlay District. Uh, we're abutted um, by commercial office buildings and a charter school uh, to the north and uh, commercial office building Brookstone to the south. Uh, Henry Clay Drive, the YMCA, uh, and the crematorium uh, to the east, and Manchester Street and the existing commercial uses to the west. Uh, the property is currently developed uh, as part of a 1998 site plan approval. It includes a one-story, about 25,000 square foot office warehouse building. Uh, there's customer and employee parking to the east uh, in the front of the site and loading areas to the north, which is uh, to the side. There's a small wetland uh, located uh, along Henry Clay Drive that was designed and permitted as a stormwater basin to service on-site drainage. Uh, it does contain a headwall outlet that outlets into the public drainage system on Henry Clay Drive. Uh, the westerly portion of the site is currently undeveloped along Manchester Street. The site is serviced by public sewer, water by Penichuk, and underground gas, telephone, and electric utilities. As you can see on the colored uh, display plan, um, Stanley Elevator, who, as you can imagine, installs, repairs, and maintains elevators, um, is proposing a one-story 9,800-square-foot warehouse expansion, uh, which is essentially to consolidate warehouse space at this location. Currently, they're uh, renting some office, uh, I mean, some off-site warehouse space elsewhere in town. Um, the proposed addition will uh, have exterior materials that will match the existing building, which will be concrete block and metal paneling. Some limited site improvements uh, associated with the project 
Uh, there's an overhead door and loading area along the northerly side of the addition. Uh, there's eight parking spaces that we are proposing. Um, there's also uh, going to be a, a ledge cut in the, in the back of the site, the southwesterly side of the addition, um, in order to get the addition in. I uh, would like to note there's no disturbance to the front of the site, the existing driveways, or the wetland along Henry Clay Drive. Uh, a couple uh, key issues I'd like to talk about. Um, traffic, the applicant does not anticipate hiring any additional employees as a result of the warehouse expansion. Uh, therefore, the project uh, is expected to have negligible impact on traffic. Again, this is more of a consolidation of existing off-site space uh, under one roof. Uh, the site is located within the Aquifer Conservation District. We did meet with the Conservation Commission and they were satisfied with our notes on the plan regarding um, Green Snow Pro certification and fertilizer use um, and had no further comment. Um, regarding stormwater, um, as I mentioned, the existing site uh, drains to the wetland along Henry Clay Drive. We're proposing to capture runoff uh, from the new pavement and roof uh, areas and pipe it to this existing basin. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to retrofit the outlet of the existing basin um, to increase the tension capabilities. So the existing basin has a 15-inch uh, outlet right now, which essentially means it doesn't have much detention capabilities during um, smaller storm events. Water is, is dumping out into the public drainage system. But, so by adding this 6-inch outlet, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be able to increase the detention capacity on site, therefore reducing peak flows off site, even with the added runoff from our project. Um, waivers, I'd be happy to go through those now, or if you'd like to wait until a little uh, further along. Tom, let's uh, take up the question of whether the board believes the application is complete okay. and ready for review first, and then we'll get into the waivers. Uh, does the board have any questions as to that question about completeness? Mm -hmm. If not, is there a motion by the board with respect to completeness? Lynn moves that the application is complete and ready for review. Nelson's got a second for that. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? So 700 for acceptance. Okay, now please get into your waivers a little bit. Okay. Uh, so waiver one has to do with uh, parking. So we're proposing 45 spaces. We've added eight spaces um, to the site. Um, so Stanley Elevator has been operating at this site for over 20 years, and they're confident that 45 spaces is, is, is ample for their needs. Um, as I mentioned, Stanley does not anticipate hiring any additional employees as a result of the project. Um, the original development that was uh, designed and permitted in 1998 uh, included 37 spaces. And at that time, the parking regulations were based on employees and company vehicles rather than square footage. So. Um, at that time, they were proposing 37 spaces where a minimum of 27 spaces is required. Um, if you break it out just based on the addition of a, a 9,800 square foot warehouse expansion at one per, per 1,200 square feet, that's about eight spaces, which is what we're proposing. Um, so we feel that requiring the applicant to construct the required number of parking spaces will be a hardship since the spaces are not needed and would add additional costs to the project. Additionally, by granting the waiver, we are able to minimize the amount of paved area on site. I will say that we are showing five uh, future spaces on the master plan uh, to demonstrate that the site has uh, uh, capacity to handle another five spaces. Um, I would also like to note that the waiver request should reflect uh, a minimum of 51 spaces. My letter says 50. Um, on one of the calculations, it was 22.1 instead of 22, so you have to round up. So that number should read 51 spaces uh, with 45 provided. Uh, the second waiver request includes... Hang on, Tom. Let's talk about that one a little bit, and, and maybe we can tackle it one at a time. Sure. So uh, remind me of this gentleman's name that came with you. Neil Hussle. Neil, Hussle. Neil you're, with, you're with Stanley Elevator? Yes, I am. Okay. How many employees do you guys have out there now? Uh, we have on site, we have 35. And the parking that you have now is 37 spaces. It's been sufficient for you? It, it is, yeah. Do you guys have any uh, occasion where customers or there's a presence where people come to visit you, or is it just a manufacturing no, facility? We're, we're strictly a, uh, a construction service company, yeah. So we, we have no 
at maybe one customer at a time yeah. if we ever have any do you operate um, in one shift a day or overnight or no one shift a day it's a long day we have you know the different hours but it's basically six in the morning till okay about five thirty six. so your parking has been sufficient you're not adding any employees you are adding a few spaces and you think that this will be sufficient for you in the future going forward and if it isn't then you still got space somewhere to build five more if you need it correct that's our plan. okay I don't have any other questions about that uh, parking um, I don't know if you'd like to pause and let the board ask any other questions they have or perhaps take action on the on the waiver sure. request anybody have any questions I, I just have one question I, I think it's a little bit easier to see on your plan but the little leader that's coming off the dashed in area kind of in the upper middle portion of that that's the five spaces can you just point to the five spaces yeah okay it was hard to see on our plans thank you okay any other comments or questions is the board prepared to make a motion with respect to the parking waiver I move that we grant the waiver Councilor Koenig moves we grant the parking waiver Nelson Nelson get the second on that uh, if there's no other discussion all in favor of yeah let Tom do it Strict conformity would pose an unnecessary hardship to the applicant in a way that would not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulations. Tom, you read that without your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> you waited until I finished to tell me that. I didn't want to interrupt. Strict, strict conformity. <laughs> You're covered. Thank you. Strict conformity would pose an unnecessary hardship to the applicant, and the waiver would not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulations. Thank you, Tom. Nelson still seconds that <laughs> no, with the addition. Second. Is there any other discussion on the waiver? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 700. Now, Tom, introduce your next waiver. Okay. Uh, the second waiver is for uh, sidewalks. So, Section 7.05D19 requires that commercial, industrial, non residential site plans provide for a paved pedestrian way or sidewalk along existing or proposed streets. Um, we're asking for a waiver of this requirement. Uh, the subject parcel measures 6.3 acres and contains approximately 300 linear feet of frontage along Henry Clay Drive and 430 linear feet along Manchester Street to the west. This section of Manchester Street is heavily wooded along the subject property's frontage but does contain a sidewalk on the opposite side of the street. The entire Henry Clay Drive Industrial Park does not contain sidewalks along its roadway. Uh, the project is minor in nature when compared with the overall size of the property and the existing development. Um, essentially, it's about 20% of the property that's being disturbed as part of this project. The disturbance is limited to the central portion of the site and will not impact frontage on either road. Uh, Stanley Elevator has been operating at, at this facility for about 20 years without the need of sidewalks along its frontage. Uh, constructing new sidewalks along the site's 750 linear feet of frontage would prove difficult and expensive due to the length of the property's frontage and the likely need for retaining walls and guardrails based on topographic conditions, specifically on Manchester Street. Thank you, Tom. Does anybody <laughs> member of the board have questions about the request for a sidewalk waiver? Mr. Chairman, this isn't in our major arterial street. Uh, are we sure we require one on this street? Uh, I did take a look at our regulations for other purposes okay. and anything in the commercial and industrial zone. Any commercial site plan in the commercial or industrial okay, zone okay. could require a sidewalk um, <laughs> unless we would decide to waive it. Now, obviously, I think the applicant makes a good good argument for a waiver, yeah. especially since he's got one on the other side of the street if anybody <laughs> cares to use it. Um, uh, no, they don't. That, they just that, said he on did. the other side of uh, the other Manchester. Side of Manchester. Oh, Manchester Street. Manchester oh, okay, street. I got you. I'm sorry. Not on Henry Clay. Yeah. But even then, I don't think that Henry Clay needs one. Um, I'll make a motion that we um, that we waive the sidewalk requirement because um, strict conformity would pose an unnecessary hardship to the applicant and that the waiver would not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulations. So. <coughs> motion by Desiree, second by Lynn. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 7 0 0. Do you have any other waivers or is that I it? do I have two more and I'll group them both together um, okay. they're for lighting and landscaping plan section 10.01 and 11.042 um, essentially we're asking for the waiver of a formal landscape and, and photometric lighting plan uh, regarding the landscaping as I mentioned where uh, our project is located in the central portion of the site the frontage along Henry Clay and Manchester Street is is vegetated uh, either naturally or, or 
uh, you know, landscaped areas that were part of their 1998 site plan approval. So we feel like a formal landscaping plan is not needed um, and would ask for a waiver from that requirement. Similarly to uh, site lighting plans, we are adding one uh, building mounted uh, wall pack that will be located um, on the north side of the addition uh, that will face on the interior side of the site. Again, this is in the centrally located portion of the site. Uh, we didn't feel it was needed to prepare a, a photometric lighting plan for the addition of one wall pack, so we're asking for that waiver. Thank you, Governor. I make a motion that we grant both these waivers on the basis that strict circumstances relative to the site plan and the conditions of the land indicate the waiver will carry out the spirit and intent of the rakes. Is there a second for Alistair's motion? Sir. Paul gets to second this one. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 7 zero, zero. Do members of the board have any additional questions about the substance of the proposal? I have a couple. Please. Um, where's, are you indicating on here where snow storage is or where you typically, you're not putting the snow storage where you would put the, the parking, like the five parking spots, the additional five parking, because you're increasing the, the paved area, but you're not. I'm yep. sorry. We don't show snow storage on the plan right now. It was a comment from staff. Was it okay um, to add it to there? So we'll okay. be adding it. There are some open areas of the site back in that area where you're talking about where the five future spaces would go. Mm -hmm. um, that would likely there be some snow storage there as well as other open areas of the site. Okay. Yeah, it looks like you should have enough open areas to find some spaces, but just designate them according to the plan, oh, yeah. to the staff's comment. And then I have uh, one one other question. I don't I don't know if it's if it's something I have to give a waiver for, but your building length, uh, your existing building length is 216 feet longwise, and then you're adding another 70 feet, looks like. I think if it's over 200 or 250, you're supposed to have a jog in the building. You're not going to see it. I don't think it's a big deal in your plans. It just sure. looks the same. I don't know if we have to do a waiver for it. I remember some discussion of that on similar projects. Robert, do you have any familiarity with the requirement and why it either does or doesn't apply here? Sadly, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I don't know if the architectural requirements are, they require, if they, I mean, we make people do it, so I would assume we should probably waive that it's unnecessary. Um, certainly for the sake of, of uh, being extra cautious, a waiver could certainly manage it. Um, I think the board could probably decide it's, whether it's necessary or not. Um, this project is in the I-1 industrial, so that is an, a usual, the architectural standards are usually in the industrial um, zone, and so this very likely is an applicable provision which requires some breakup of a facade when the front length of the building is that long. Um, the board tends to consider offering those waivers or granting those waivers when the lengthy facade of the building doesn't face the street and isn't available for anybody other than them to see. Let them do what they want to their own building. But with that, uh, Tom, are you uh, caught off guard, caught flat-footed with this? A or bit, yeah. Okay. Um, in, the, in the normal process of making an argument for any waiver, you can certainly do it orally. Um, so that's what I would recommend that you consider doing and okay. then um, follow along with what okay. we've already indicated as sort of the reasons I don't have for that it. section offhand. I got my book in the back. Do you want to check it? I don't have my sure. book, so I... <laughs> rub it, rub it. I think it's going to be green. Yeah, it'll be in here somewhere. Yeah. I didn't bring mine tonight, but it's typical. Tom, while you're looking for that, would you mind if we conduct a public hearing, or do you want to be able to hear any public comments that occur? Okay. I don't know if we will have any, but let's see. Are there any members of the public or interested citizens who wish to weigh in on this application? Yeah, that won't take any time at all, Tom. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll close the public hearing, and thank you for the offering of the input. Uh, let's take a second and see if we can find that regulation and make sure we understand it. Getting closer. All right, so it's going to be, sorry, uh, section 12, 12.04, 12.04, 0.2, 0.2, B. And it's in the little, well, for us, it's a little green folder. Yeah. yeah that's what I remember, too. I was just testing you guys to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure about B, but I had everything. Had the rest of it. And it's, yeah.
Microphone, please. Microphone. It, it was bright, and I pressed the button too many times. All right. Uh, no uninterrupted length of any facade shall exceed 200 horizontal feet. Building facades exceeding 200 feet in length measured horizontally shall incorporate plane projections or recesses having a, a depth of at least 2.5% of the width of the entire facade for at least 20% of the length of facade. Uh, this requirement may be waived where they would interfere with research development or manufacturing processes. Manufacturing. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we grant a waiver. Well, let's let him ask for it. Oh, first. sorry, go on. Uh, I request <laughs> that waiver from Section 12.042B. Uh, okay, Mr. Thank Chairman, you. I make a motion we grant a waiver for, on the basis that the extension, which m does bring it up to 200 plus feet, is not facing a road in either of the two roads that abut the site. And therefore, would pose an unconditional and therefore it's hardship. Doesn't, it, and therefore, it would pose an unnecessary hardship to the applicant, and the waiver is not contrary to the spirit and intent of the regs. There we go. Is there a second for Alistair's motion? Nelson, we got you, Nelson, over here. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 7 0 0. Desiree, good, good work, though. Thank you for catching it because you. No, not finally. You're always here. You're always here being helpful. Um, but, you know, good catch. Um, we've already done our public hearing. Does the board have any other substantive questions regarding the proposal? Mr. Chairman, there is the one issue and the fact that the drainage uh, that changes have not been subject to C CLD review yet. I don't know if CLD's review has come in, Bob. It has. I have not gone through the comments myself, but I'm sure Tom would be happy yeah. to address that. Could, yeah. Tom, would you like to favor us with your comments on anything that CLD may have said? Sure. We're, we're, I think we can, uh, we can uh, easily address anything that, that they brought up in their, in their letter, including, including the drainage. They were, well, a couple of their comments had to do with uh, questioning and asking for some documentation how we got to where we were with that existing wetland in the front of the site. So. Um, I think through by submitting the site plan and some of the supporting information from 1998, we should be able to to uh, meet any any concern regarding their concern was that we were dumping into an existing wetland that wasn't functioning as a stormwater basin today. So, are you saying in your reply that if we were to grant a full approval tonight, you can comply without hesitation to everything that CLD told you to do? Correct. Thank you. Yeah. Condition number five. Yeah. Nelson, did you have a? <clears throat> Just one question. Uh, I know that there's cuts and fills on this property to make it uh, acceptable for this addition. I is there a net transfer of material off-site or onto the site to bring it to? Um, uh, at this point, at this point, we're not really sure. We're still looking at uh, the geotech went out and did some test pits in the back of the site, so we're still looking at that. As I mentioned, there's a. A uh, little bit of blasting that we're going to have to do uh, in the back of the site mm -hmm. to kind of create that building pad. So um, m my guess is it's going to be pretty balanced. Okay. All right. Uh, I just want to know if there's a significant amount of material being removed. Uh, are you going to blast or are you going to hammer it if it's that small? Well, we got to see what the test pits come back as uh, to see if it's competent rock or, or can kind of be peeled back. Okay. Other comments or questions? Is the board prepared to make a motion? Yes, I will, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion that we grant final approval of the site plan for this applicant of Stanley Elevator and uh, with no further, uh, subject to the, all the conditions on the memo dated May 11th, 2017 from Robert Bryce, plus the comments that, that we haven't seen but which the applicant has accepted from CLD. Thank you. Is there a second for Alistair's motion? Desiree seconds the motion. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 7 0 0. Good Thank luck very much. You. Thank you very much. Good Thank luck you. with your project. I'm sorry. Next item on our agenda is item number six, which is Forma Beyond Wood Inc. as the applicant and NNP Associated Realty Trust as the owner. Review for acceptance and consideration of final approval of a waiver of full site plan review for parking at an existing manufact for, for parking at an existing manufacturing warehouse business. The parcels located at 20 Star Drive in the I-1 Industrial uh, Aquifer Conservation District. Tax map 3D1, lot 12. 
Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? Uh, again, in this case, uh, the applicant actually met with the Conservation Commission last night and provided uh, to you when you came in tonight was their comments um, regarding this application. I did see those, and I saw that the comment from the Conservation Commission was that there was no hazardous material stored on site or other or those spill concerns, from at least as far as they're, they're viewing. Okay. Thank you for that. Please introduce yourself and tell us about your project. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Keane. I'm a, uh, one of the partners at Former Beyond Wood. Uh, today with me is Wendy Keeler. She's uh, representing the owner of 20 Star Drive. Um, we're a manufacturing company uh, currently manufacturing in about 4,000 square feet in Wilton, New Hampshire. Uh, we're looking to expand our operation and move to 20, 20 Star Drive uh, in Merrimack. Uh, we currently employ about six people. Um, we're looking to uh, increase that to about 12 uh, to 14 employees. Um, the current building um, uh, is 20,500 square feet. Uh, we're looking at about 12,000 square feet, and, and there's an existing tenant that's been there for some time in about 6,000 square feet or 6, is that correct? Um, or 8,000, 8, 8,500 square feet. 8, square feet. Yeah. Um, we are looking for a uh, final approval on the uh, parking as submitted. Um, uh, we didn't bring our tripod tonight, so we're not that well prepared. You guys have sure copies of all the plans, right? <laughs> um, so we're, we're just... Uh, going to go through that and see if there's um, you know any questions on that and we're right now we're just going to have standard operating hours of 7 to 4 Monday through Friday um, our required parking is one we're going to have 6,000 square feet of manufacturing and 6,000 square feet of warehouse so that leaves us with requiring 15 parking spaces uh, what we're showing is 18 on the building um, and the other t other tenant I think is going to require what do they require? 11. 11. So that would leave 26 total for the building. But you're showing 18 on your plan? Uh, we're showing 18 on the plan, yes. So you definitely think that you're going to be using the extra spaces. Where are they going to be? Uh, there's a, a site, or uh, I think that's shown. Is it shown on the plan? Oh, yeah, you, have, you all have copies of it, but it's um, they're shown on the... They're shown on the um, existing property. Uh, the additional spaces are on, on the lot next door, which right. is owned by the tenant. Right. It's the current tenant. It's literally a, on the other side of twenty, of twenty Star Drive. He owns a one-acre parcel, um, and we showed ten spaces there. I think we're required to have eight additional spaces, and this tenant has been leasing at this location. It's in my note there, but I believe it's. Um, 10 plus years um, and he's a granite company so are they gonna be his employees that have to go park over there or yours uh, his, his employees yeah his. he's uh, yeah he's I guess there's just two employees yeah the, uh, he has um, himself his son and a, and a part-time employee okay so he's not using 11 I'm sorry I misunderstood you a second ago yeah okay. no he's not we're just trying to meet the requirements no the requirements based yeah based on right right yeah yeah okay and he's cleared his lot, and it's all cleared out there. And, and it's, I mean, it's almost like the same property, but it's on the other side of 20 Star Drive. And this is at the very dead end of 20 Star Drive. Okay. So it's just asking for a waiver on the parking requirement for. Okay, so no other changes to the building or site other than sorting out this parking question? That's correct. Okay. Uh, first up for the board is to decide whether the application as submitted is complete and ready for review. What's the will of the board? Nelson. I'll move that it's complete and uh, ready for review. Is there a second for, uh, for Nelson's motion? Tom. Tom. Tom has a second. Any uh, further discussion on completeness? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Seven zero zero for completeness. Okay, so uh, let's uh, have the board ask any questions that you have with respect to first the parking and the request by the applicant to deal with that. I and certainly. Have a comment on the parking. You marked out the spots, so the 18 spots um, on the main part. Yeah. It doesn't look like any of those would be ADA compliant, which isn't our regulation there. But that usually leads to losing a spot because you'll usually you'll lose one stall. Okay. Generally. So. 
if you can make that up on the other side, that's that's great. I'm just it's a heads up. Yeah, there is. Uh, I think the requirement is for eight, and we have shown ten, so there is two extra okay. spots. Yeah, I think that would help you out for that. Any other comments or questions about parking? Could I, Mr. Chairman, raise the question of what? I mean, I'm surprised you say there's no chemicals around. Um, I understood use of urethanes was on this site, and I have to admit, I'll be uh, and, and that I am very familiar with the use of urethanes in from previous life. Could you explain to us how the process? Basically, a brief, and I don't want to know trade secrets. Sure. I just want to know a basic yep. concept of, of what the process that you've got is, because urethanes to me are a danger signal. That's all I would say. Yeah, I, we, we showed the um, tech data sheet to the Conservation Commission yesterday. Uh, it's a moisture-cured urethane, um, which basically we pour into, into a mold, um, and that cures in about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So we don't have any, um, you know, it cures to a solid. There's no, we, so we don't have any uh, hazardous waste associated with, um, with our procedures. So you're saying that you use water to get the urethane to cure? Well, it's n it, no, it's moisture cured from moisture in the in the air. So it does. You're not having any blowing agent of any sort to no. get it to go. No. All right. And what precautions are you taking? Because as I understand, urethane um, it has a tendency to burn quite well. It has a tendency to burn. Burn. Uh, burn yeah. Yeah, um, the, the existing building is, is sprinklered, um, and we also, um, you know, as part of our submission, we would have uh, a fire suppression system if, if it's required. You know, where, we have, where we're working right now, the only requirements that they required from the town was the uh, sprinkler system. Robert, has, has the fire department had the opportunity to review and weigh in on this? They actually did at the end of the day today. I don't have a copy of them in the file here, but we did just okay. get the comments today. So our normal approach to this is to let the fire department solve fire department issues, and yep. we require the applicants to meet whatever those concerns are. If we had those in advance, you would have a chance to tell us, hey, I think they're being a little tough on me with you know this requirement or that requirement. What do you think? And we could have that discussion. If we move forward as it is today, you're sort of getting locked in to, com to complying with whatever they've offered for suggestions, perhaps sight unseen. Are you comfortable with that? Uh, yeah, based on where we're currently doing it, I don't imagine that the regulations will be much different from uh, you know, Wilton for the fire okay. department. Uh, they've had no issues. Sounds good. Other than urethane, do you have any other chemical processes or, your, or solvents or anything else that you use as a part of your work? No. Okay. Do you have to ventilate or do anything with the air handling to deal with the urethane? Uh, not the at the volumes that we, we produce at, no. Okay. What kind of volumes do you produce? So you're using the urethane products to make? Uh, it's, we make uh, basically uh, wall coverings. So it's, uh, you know, planks, uh, sheet, uh, we, uh, three by ten sheets, that kind of. Okay. You know, it's, it's not a huge volume um, production. Okay. Uh, we're kind of a... Yeah, boutique manufacturer, uh, mm -hmm. made to order product. Okay. How does the urethane come in? In 50 gallon drums or? Uh, it comes in in uh, totes. Okay. Fair enough. Other comments or questions? The one that I have goes back to the parking, and that is when we have a site that is proposing that the landlord, landowner, um, be allowed to have less parking because there's some access to parking off site. It requires that some formal easements be executed between the two landowners to establish a permanent right for those parking spaces uh, in the event that your granite tenant decides life would be better somewhere else. You continue to have the rights to, to that parking because it's a necessary part of your, your um, lot use. The other possibility is whether the board would consider waiving the requirements so that 18 is your required number and that's what you have and you'd never need to have the 10 or the extra eight. And so I want to hear from you what you're comfortable with and then hear from the board as to what, it, what approach it would like to take. I would say that the board's usual approach is to require the additional spaces and then have the easements put in place. But let me hear from you a little bit. That's going to be up to you guys. Yeah, I, um, I mean, I guess I don't think, I mean, 
waving you know the additional parking across the street you know it's there but having that easement created I'm not sure if that's something that the owner Bert who owns that property is going to be wanting to do because it's it ties up his property um, the parking that's required for Brian's use in the 12,000 square feet is definitely met on the site on the owner's site so um, now we're in question of we know we need to add a handicap show a handicap yeah, space. Yeah, so essentially we're looking we would need 12 and um, the other tenant would need three which is 15 and we would have 17 with the right. yeah. Uh, so the configuration that you have now with the granite business there um, your salt your problem is solved in two different ways one is he's not using all that much parking anyway no. and he's the one that owns the lot across the street where you could use it but let's say the granite company leaves and you're trying to rent out your 85,000 square feet 8,500 8, square feet to a new tenant mm -hmm. and the new tenant wants nine spaces you don't have them mm -hmm. what are you how are you going to solve that problem with your new tenant because the granite company is off to somewhere else Right. Um, that's why the easement is usually the requirement to say your your access to those parking spaces is not only established but it's permanent um, and I get the idea that the guy that owns the land may not love that idea but that's one of the requirements for working out a situation like this well I would imagine like the 12 parking spots that would lead five for the 8500 he's just gonna have to make you know agree with the new tenant that would move in that he's just got five parking spots for that 8,500 square feet. And it could right? just be a wholesale, I mean, it's not a wholesale, a warehouse use, a complete warehouse use at that prop, at that 8,500 square feet as well. Now, so. it could very well be, but the warehouse use is what drove the calculations that led you to need 26 in the first place. They aren't retail businesses as they're classified now. Right. Well, it was the manufacturing that drove the purpose of this. Right, yeah, because the manufacturing is a little bit higher use than warehouse. Yes, right? correct. Yeah, so it was the it was manufacturing that came in, and in reality, the granite company has been doing manufacturing because manu he does manufactures granite. He has about I think two or three clients, and that's it that he deals with. But I understand that you're looking to the future, and um, I don't know how many parking places. It's one per twelve hundred square feet yeah. for um, eighty five. Well, that would leave. Uh, for 8,500 square feet, which is right. So you've got a plan here that shows that you're going to have 10 parking spaces across the street. Did the, the granite company thought it was okay to do that? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, even ne even without necessarily having easements in place, once it's a part of a, an approved site plan, that becomes a permanent encumbrance on his property. Is he aware that that's what he's agreeing to? No, I, okay. I, I wasn't aware either. I mean, I, I traditionally, I usually see if someone needs off-site parking, it's a lease agreement, you know, yeah. long-term lease agreement. In this case, it would be a five-year lease. Um, but to, to have a permanent easement on his property, no, I wasn't aware, and I, and I, 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 don't, I certainly I don't think Bert's aware either. They're so. pretty common around well, town that we have them, but it has to be something that the, the two yeah. people that are offering it up have agreed to. And the, and the reason for that is that if you end up with, with more stuff on your lot than you can fit with your parking, then everybody's going to go park on the street, and anybody that's in the surrounding area that either is running a business or, or I don't know how, what the closest residence is to this. Nowhere. Um, no, nowhere. No, no, no work. Right. Nowhere close it's, to it. But yeah. anybody else that's running their business is going to be impacted by someone parking on the street to get to your business. Um, My understanding is that, through. you know, the, the building has been leased to different, you know, the history of the building up until May 2016 was leased with no issues with parking. So yeah. I don't know if that. There was a beverage, non-alcoholic beverage company. They left May of 2016. Yeah. I should talk on the microphone. Um, and then there was a medical device company that did shipping and I think manufacturing out of California. And years ago there was a shingle manufacturing company. Um, but that's... Robert, do you have any um, thoughts as to why the calculation is generating a little bit larger parking requirement this time? Um, I don't. Jillian handled this one, so I didn't have my hands on that. Um, but it's just in respect to the previous tenants, as we also do have to note that we have no records of any other people who came in, which means they didn't come in to us to right. seek proper approvals prior to moving in. So I think the last actual approval we had was from somebody who was many, many years ago. If you go back so. to the, the thing, Mr. Chairman, if it helps at all, 
we have a plan dated sometime in 1983 with the worthy Mr. Disco signed off on it and the recommended parking spaces then were one space for employee per each employee and one space for a company vehicle. I suspect that's not the way it works today. Those changes that the lady talked about uh, never came to the planning board. I can oh, I'm quite sure okay. of that. Yes, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. <laughs> That's what I was told yeah. when I met with, yeah. you know, had a, we had a planning meeting, um, internal meeting. Um, no, I think what triggered it was that, you know, Brian, starting a manufacturing company at this location, wanted to make sure that everything was kosher with planning, and mm -hmm. he is adding 6,000 square feet of manufacturing. So because that's... Um, no, no question. And yeah. we're glad to have his business here in town. And, I know. And I think that we'll ultimately come up with a solution for this. Yeah. The only question is uh, if he's going to use about a dozen of your parking spaces, um, that leaves you with enough for today for the granite business. But um, what does that give us in terms of an approved site plan or some ability to... Um, make sure that in the future you've always got enough parking on your site and you don't have your limitations that leave you there. Now, you know, it all depends on what the will of the board is. There's been occasions where the board has said, look, it's your lot, your lot, and if you're stuck with five spaces for your second tenant, you know, your, your, your tenant will solve that problem right. for you. That's your choice of tenant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that affects you. But, uh, uh, but we shouldn't expect the tenant who needs more parking space to decide that if he's only got five that he's now going to park on the street. Well, or, or what they're going to do, Brian, is take your spaces, and then right. you're going to be knocking on the door saying, "Yeah, the I got 12, and you right. got four, and you're in yeah, my that, space." Yeah, that's certainly, um, you know, that's something that the owner is going to have to, you know, I guess agree to that, you know, future if the granite yeah. guy that's there moves out, then he knows that he's just got six or five spaces for. Yeah, not that it's an answer to the question. Feet. How long has your granite guy been there? Uh, uh, I think it's like letter. ten years or. Not, not exactly moving from place to place, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's in the letter. I'm just trying to find it. I apologize. Um, ten years. Ten uh, years. Ten years. Over yeah. ten years. Over ten years. Okay. Yeah. Um. So my thought on this for the benefit of the board members is you got to do one or the other. Either you waive the parking requirement down to the number she has, or you require the cross easements. You can't sort of accept the additional off-site parking mm. without some easement or some yeah. establishment for them. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's a terrible argument to say that they can get by with the parking that they have with 18. Um, it's up to you. you know, I don't, I don't want to encourage anybody to think in a particular way. It's up to everybody to come up with their own view of it. But what, anybody have any comments or thoughts? Or? I'd be willing to grant a waiver to let them do with the 18 spaces they show based on the testimony from the applicant of what's going on <coughs> here yeah. and uh, they're just pointing out that they're limited to that and, and that's that's it for now yeah. if they want to come back later and uh, ask for more parking across the street that's another s story somebody else's problem I guess so yeah. on your site plan the first page it could could space 13 or 18 be increased in size just slightly to make it an ADA accessible space? Uh, so that you've got 18 and one of them is ADA? But if he's not having customers, he's just an employee. I'm not sure he's required to. I may be wrong on this. One but of the employees would be. Yeah, yeah I know. You, but you, need it. you think it's a law? Yeah. Okay. It's Robert, possible that 18 may be. Yeah, I spaces? think 18 could widen. Don't. I'm sorry, I don't. Desiree, that you brought this up. Was there something that you had <laughs> sort of insight on? Yeah. I'm pretty, I have to pull up the actual, the ADA thing. I don't, I keep it at work. I don't keep it here. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because we don't regulate for that, but it's, it's, no, I it's know, one I per, like, uh, every 20 spaces or something like that. Or, I actually think it was just on the one that we just looked at, but it's like 5% like and one of them has to be van accessible. Is that when dealing with the public or is that... A requirement um, it is dealing it's generally not. dealing with the public yes oh, and it's also but it's also like you have to do it if you have a warehouse you have to do it if you're retail you like it's it's just required pretty much yeah. everything you like the site you're required to have the ADA compliance that that includes all the way into the building too but that's clearly not anything we're regulating but that's 
so to Lynn's point, it may not be a customer because you're not going to have customers come to your site. But right. if you hire somebody or somebody yep. that already works for you gets injured, and is uh, you know continues to work for you because they may right. be fully capable of doing so, um, you may have a need of that space. So. That's why the law is in place. Yep, that's why it's there. Yep. Um, do you believe uh, so? The, the initial question: Do you think that either one of those end spaces on that side? Could be a little bit bigger. Uh, it looks you need like about four extra feet for Yeah, it looks like 18. Poss yeah, I mean, it looks like 18. From just looking at how this is scaled now, that it's possible that you would have be able to widen that space, yes. Is that area to the side of 18 paved already? Yes. Yes. Okay, so there's already some pavement there. It would just be striped a little different to make that yes. a wider ADA space. And are you talking about an ADA space, or then someone mentioned a van? ADA van, van size space. ADA, is ADA van size space. Okay. It's it's the now one with putting, making it the furthest one from the building. Probably is the normal there. choice. <laughs> so you could bump them down. Well, but you, could, you could shift the whole thing yeah. down. Yeah. You could put it on your rent. You're not yeah. Yeah. I don't so believe they're striped now. I believe they're just. So the curb cut yeah. off of Star Drive is that entire width there? So that you. Tom, you're not turned on. I thought I did. Sorry. The curb cut off Star Drive is that entire width? So you kind of drive right into space 18 are, are you going to do anything to try and protect that car or uh well, yeah there's there's is no, there's yeah, i mean what no kind of vehicles are you going to bring in here do you have trucks or or uh, trailers yeah, or will, anything or there will be on deliveries yeah there will be trucks yeah so i think from my understanding from community development department as part of the approval here is that they'll stripe these spaces however they end up being so I know that isn't exactly protection, but at least it shows somebody that this area this is for parking and this be is a, for driving. Drive-through area. I, I, I'm I'm curious. So your deliveries are going to be on the side of the building. There is that why you're keeping that space clear? Or uh, yes. And I think and the pecan truck get out of there. So you, so you can't expand 13 because you need the space between 13 and the building. Uh, no, we're talking about leaving that, but expanding 18. But I'm saying you can't expand 13 because you need the space between 13 and the building uh, to drive through. Yep. Do you have some way to turn around? Or I, I don't know what the property looks like back there. But uh, the, the uh, circle here is is a is a turnaround. No, right in here. your in your lot once oh, the, in the truck lot? comes in next to your building, what does it How do? Get out of there. Uh, no, they would. Yeah, they would have to come in, turn around, and back into the building. Yeah, there's no turnaround. Back in down that, down the side of the building? Yeah. Have you got room to, I'm almost thinking if you're going to do that, you're going to have to back into the parking lot, period. I don't see space to, I don't we're talking to... box trucks, right? Yeah, they would back into the parking lot, correct. I don't know the distance, but it's a pretty large area. But I don't... It's, a, it's a long distance. <laughs> no, I meant it's a pretty large area between the, Parking spaces that are shown. Yes. Uh, Box truck takes a lot of space to, to turn around. Yeah. Well, uh, they, you, they would turn around in a circle and then back into the parking lot. I mean, there's, I an, aerial, there's, there's an aerial photograph that you all have in your packets that you can oh kind yeah. of see the, um, yeah. where he had granite there now. He's moved, he's cleaned the whole yard up, but um, you can kind of see the distance between the building and where yeah, the other that's yeah, the parking spots are what, 20 feet? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, it's got to be 50 feet. I just do exactly yeah. the same size Some as the other <coughs> But you can see the, you can see the, I mean, the granite kind of equals parking yep. cars. And there's quite a bit of, between the building and the, the granite. That's no longer there. <coughs> So these photographs are your building? Yes, those are, um, that's the building. Okay. The red portion is where Brian's business would be. And then to the left is the uh, gray metal, and that's where Bert is, the granite company. So the building on my plan is an L-shaped. Yeah. It's square. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, no, it's L-shaped. I mean, that's, this is the building here. Building is square. Oh, this is the gray building. This is the red building here. You got, oh, yeah, okay. you got all all of that. There is the building. He's got he's got delivery doors and, and whatnot right there. 
right here okay. where all this parking is. Yeah. You're going to be parking in front of the delivery doors? No. Those are the four spaces that yeah. are truck spaces. Five, six, seven, and eight are designated as truck spaces. Yep. I got you. I'm sorry I'm for the confusion. I was looking at a part of the building. As so that's why they're extended out further, huh? Correct. So that's where your deliveries are going to be in those areas? Uh, yeah, there's going to be, you know, we need one space for delivery. Okay. So your trucks aren't going to have any trouble getting into five, six, seven, and 8. It's the granite guys if he's got to get somebody to the back part of that building. But those doors are facing right into the driveway anyway, so he can do that. So he's probably fine, too. It's just, it, for our parking regulations, you don't expect the parking space to also be a delivery space. Mm. Not yeah. normally, although we have counted, um, like, stacking spaces in a drive through line as being spaces. Um, and different kind of a well, context. But and that's how it was approved. And the things in front of the gas pumps are counted as spaces. And, and for parking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, and, it does, and the, it's different. The door actually, that door doesn't, the door closest to the um, granite company's L, that's not an operating door. Yeah, there's, there's four delivery spaces, but essentially we would only use one. Right. We, we take a delivery about once a week. So the way that you get into this building ordinarily is you walk through the couple of steps up at the red entrance at the end of the red end of the building? Correct. That's uh, the normal yes. pedestrian way. Mm -hmm. well, that gives me um, a different thought in terms of the ADA mm -hmm. space. Um, if the only way to walk into the building is by going up five steps. No, no, no. There's, well, there's, there's access at the beginning of the building as well. Well, that is the beginning of the building. It's up steps. Unless you're going into the gray part, the gray part's the only thing with entrance is at ground level. But you're going up steps. To if the red building. To the red yeah. building, yep. yeah. And if you've got to go up steps, yeah. then a handicap accessible van really ain't going to get you anywhere. Or at least not a wheel, not a, not right. the van style. Um, anyway. I think in the bigger picture, the applicant's point that this, there's a lot of paved space here to put a couple of rows of parking in, they probably do have enough space to mm. drive through and maneuver the trucks in between the lanes and all of that stuff pretty easily. That brings us back to our original question, which is waiver versus cross easements. Yeah. Nelson, you're happy with a waiver? I'm okay. happy with a yeah. waiver. Yeah, I am too. Okay. So, um, did the applicant actually make a request of a waiver or offer us the two choices? Oh. Yeah, yes, they did, and they waiver. provided justification in your packet. So. Okay. Let's <clears throat> find that so we can make sure we address it. The rest, the, the request for the waiver includes allowing 18 spaces because of the ones across the street, and we will be talking about a waiver that says 18 is enough. Period. End of sentence. If we're happy mm -hmm. with that, so if so, what's the will of the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we grant we grant a waiver of parking to the 18 spaces that the people are proposing to us on the basis that specific circumstances. Well, I'm. Oh, you want well, they offered one. They're just saying. That oh, they, well, you want the strict conformity would pr would propose an unnecessary hardship to the applicants, and the waiver will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. That works. Is there a second for that? Sure. Lynn has the second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Seven zero zero. So, okay, eighteen is the parking number. Um, you certainly are free to use those across the street if you want to, but they're not a part of your site plan. You're not required to have them or build them. Thank you. Um, with that, I don't think that we've offered to take any public testimony or hear from abutters yet. Let's uh, open the floor and see if there are any abutters or citizens who wish to weigh in. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, does the board have any other questions about the proposal in general? Since parking was kind of all it, I doubt there would be much more to discuss. I'm not going to do 
anything else other than clean up some spaces. Mr. Chairman, in that, hearing nothing, may I make a motion that we grant a final approval of for the part for the applicant for former Wood Beyond Wood Inc. to start his business at Twenty Star Drive. Subject to all the conditions. In the Subject to all the conditions that uh, in jump the mem memo from Gillian yeah, Harris dated May mentioned. 9. What's that? And then mentioned. And then mentioned. Um, is there a second for Alistair's motion? Paul has a second. Oh, okay. And I have a question. Sure. Uh, we want to include the review by the fire department. I think. Is that not already? It, it's it's that's yeah, fire department review. Will has already been completed, so we do have comments from that. But number four is applicants shall address any forthcoming comments from municipal departments as applicable. It was all lumped together. So it was already required. Fires in there. Yeah. yeah, okay. We mentioned that. Very good. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? The motion on the floor is to grant conditional final approval subject to the conditions in the staff memo. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Seven zero zero. Welcome Thank you for your to your presentation. Thank you. Yes, Thank welcome. You. So I just have a question. I think it'll be in what we receive, but so we do need to create the handicap space still, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In one of those spaces, but I think that you've got enough room when you look at the site. Yeah. I think there's some room there. Yes, there, there is. Um, Robert will send you, or somebody in the department will send you an <coughs> approval letter that outlines all of the conditions that okay. you're required to fulfill, um, okay. fire department, all those things. So you'll get that. If you have any questions about that, they're always there and helpful and able to walk you through it. They're very helpful. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's like 100 in here. Yeah. Oh, it is. Um, Keach Nordstrom Associates, Inc. and Charles H. Hazen as the applicants, and Richard P. and Juliana Hazen as owners, review for acceptance and consideration of final approval of a lot line adjustment and subdivision plan for a five-parcel minor subdivision. The parcels are located at 90 and 94 Wilson Hill Road in the R1 Residential and Aquifer Conservation and Flood Hazard Conservation Districts. Tax map 4B, lot 114 and 114-2. Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? Uh, so for this project, you were provided with three pieces of documentation at the beginning of the night. Uh, one of them is a written waiver request for a provision of a paid pedestrian way. Uh, another one is the uh, comments from the Conservation Commission meeting, which took place last night. And finally, the uh, applicant had conducted a vernal pool study, and uh, the report was just recently finalized, so I've got a copy of that for you as well. So my understanding from reading the Conservation Commission information is, at least as far as the Conservation Commission is concerned, the vernal pool is resolved by waiting till the season's over before you deal with the lot and then the vernal pool doesn't come back next year. Is that right? Robert? Yeah, that's how I understood it too. Please, thank you. Okay, <coughs> please introduce yourself and tell me about the project. Good evening, board. My name is Brent Cole from Keach Nordstrom Associates. I do want to uh, pre-apologize. Uh, my wife is due in two days and she's only supposed to call if there's an emergency. So if I have to pick up the phone, it's because she went into labor. Congratulations Thank to you, to her, um, and please answer the phone. <laughs> and you better talk fast. Uh, yeah, so um, hopefully it doesn't happen tonight, but it, it may. <laughs> but um, we are here for the uh, Hazen family, and they are looking to subdivide their parcel. Um, this parcel dates back hundreds of years. Um, it's been owned by the Hazens. It's been owned by the Uplums. Um, they've subdivided it um, throughout the years, given pieces to family members, um, sold pieces off, and this is the remainder. And they are looking to subdivide this lot into uh, four lots, uh, three additional. And the project is really twofold. It begins with a lot line adjustment between lot 114-2. Um, that's with 114, and then the remainder of that parcel will be subdivided to create the three additional lots along Upham Road. Uh, the parent parcel 114 is roughly 28 acres, has frontage along Wilson Hill Road, frontage along Upham Road, and frontage along the Sauhegan River to the south. Um, the property is within the Residential Zoning District, Wetland Conservation District, Shoreland Protection District, and the Aquifer Conservation District. Um, the applicants currently reside on the um, subject parcels, and the properties are served by private well and on-site septic systems. 
The newly subdivided lots will have frontage along Upham Road. Upham Road is a Class 5 gravel road. Uh, we went out on site with DPW and the fire department and uh, walked Upham Road. They had two requests. They requested that we construct a turnaround at the end of Upham Road. There was an existing easement there um, during the last subdivision for a turnaround. That's been, that turnaround that was there kind of became the driveway um, and it's not up to DPW standard for a fire truck and for a plow truck. They've requested that we bring in new gravel, create the, the um, proper width for a uh, turnaround for the fire truck and the, and the plow truck. That, that um, construction will require a shoreland permit. It's a shoreland permit by notification. And because it's in the right of way, uh, we will need the town signature. It's actually, the, they will be the applicant. I just wanted that on the record. Um, I'll work with Robert. Uh, to get the town signature for that application to DES. And then the second thing was the construction of um, the flattening of the slope along Upham Road where the culvert is. This is, this relates to the Vernal Pool um, and the wetland impact, but DPW director that uh, asked that we create a flatter slope along the west side of Upham Road there. Right now it's a one-to-one -one slope. Um, it looks like there was remnants of a rock wall around the culvert. Over time that's become basically a one-to-one -one steep slope and the DPW director requested that it become uh, um, flatter, like a three-to-one or a four-to-one. Uh, we c we um, designed a three-to-one slope there to minimize the wetland impact. Um, and on the other side we constructed or we designed a two-to-one slope where there's a one-to-one -one slope now. The, um, the Can issue you with show that. Me point to that area that you're talking about where the culprit is. It's along this. I got to get you to take that <coughs> phone with you so Grab we can hear line. you. Thanks. So the culvert along Upham Road is underneath here. Okay. This drains back this way and then onto the neighbor's land. So the head wall around the culvert on both sides of Upham Road is now too steep and you're going to do three to one on one side and two to one on the other? Correct. Is Kyle satisfied with the two to one? Because my understanding is that he usually likes three to, minimum of three to one. So a requirement. that is, um, we're asking a waiver for that tonight. The reason we're asking a waiver is because we're, we're limited by the land that you guys own as the right of way. Um, the, the gravel road, that's about a 25 maybe a 30 foot right away through there and the gravel road this time. We just don't own the land on that side to create a three to one would, would be into that guy's property. Unless the road moves towards your property a little right. bit. We could, yeah. Make yourself a go foot. Give yourself a foot. Okay, um, please continue. Please proceed with the presentation. So when we started to prepare the wetland application for the west side of Upham Road, um, we were dealing with Fish and Game. Fish and Game requested a vernal pool study. Um, the study came back that the wetland that we are impacting is a vernal pool. Um, we met with the Conservation Commission last night. Uh, we discussed that. Um, basically, the vernal pool is there because the culvert has been completely silted in, uh, lack of maintenance. It's a 24-inch deep vernal pool and the pipe is completely full of sediment, so we'll lose 15 inches on the vernal pool immediately um, once we clean out that, that culvert. Um, like I said, we met with the Conservation Commission last night. They gave recommendation, um, and they also agreed to sign the wetland application for a minimum expedited impact. Uh, we have um, received comments from DPW and planning, and this relates to the handout that I gave you. Uh, the one topic that I wanted to discuss was the driveway access to lot 114. Uh, that's the lot on the far west side. The DPW was concerned about site distance. Um, I've given you a profile um, on that plan that shows the adequate site distance. I've spoken with DPW. It meets, all, it meets the minimum requirement for sight line. And then Conservation Commission had concern that we may have a wetland impact. Um, when we thread the driveway through the two wetlands. Um, and I think that the plan for you um, and the exhibit shows that we can easily get a driveway through there without any sort of wetland impact. 
What's the width of the driveway that you're showing on this plan here? 14 feet. So you got three times that in that pinch space between the wetlands? Correct. Okay. Um, we are requesting two waivers tonight. Uh, one was for the um, change from um, the town standard of four to one slope and going to a three to one slope on one side, two to one slope on the other. And the other was for a sidewalk along Wilson Hill Road. I can get into those further, but from my recollection, you want to accept them. You don't want a sidewalk up there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let the board dictate the conversation. Do you have questions about his request for waivers or any other part of the? Have we accepted this for review? We need to accept not. first. I move. Lynn moves to accept the application as complete. Is there a second? Desiree seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 700 to accept it. Um, so now continuing with any dialogue the board would like to have with the applicant. Nelson? Okay, I'd like to start off with the, uh, the termination of, uh, of Upham Road. Uh, that's going to be a cul-de-sac, I presume. It actually won't be a cul-de-sac. It'll be a turnaround. You'll pull up. Um, to the west, you'll back down, and then you'll pull out. Hammerhead. 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 Why not a cul-de-sac? The, the room that a cul-de-sac uh, takes is, is quite a lot. Uh -huh. um, we would, it would have to be three times the size of what, what's out there. And the, the DPW didn't feel that it was necessary. I'd like to hear from DPW on that uh, issue. Is this going to be paved? It will not be paved. It's an existing gravel road today. It will remain existing gravel. Oh. Well, we were told it was going to be paved, I guess. So yeah, I thought that was the feedback staff, that we got. I don't I don't know where, where that came from. But. We're at our staff meeting on Monday, Robert. Uh, Do you recall that discussion, that, Robert? That, um, Jillian told us it was going to be paved. Actually, I think the community development director told you it was going to be paid. <coughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. too. Has there been any discussion with Tim or his department about paving the road? Never. Uh, we met with DPW. They didn't recommend that it be paved. Well, we're only adding two additional lots to Upham Road. Um, that additional traffic, I don't think, warrants full pavement out there. Well, you're At adding that. three lots. Uh, the, ex the existing lot actually uses the Upham Road. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. And there's an option for a couple more lots on the other side, on the land to the uh, east. Th that's not owned by us. I know. Yep. But it's quite possible they will want to access more this road as well. Area. Yeah. Still, I wouldn't think that five, if they got two or three lots, that five lots would would warrant pavement but you got shorter paved streets yeah um, I mean it all depends on what the people that are going to build houses there want and are willing to put up with and all of that um, pavement makes a huge difference for snow maintenance that's for sure mm -hmm. um, Nelson do you have other co comments or questions uh, well let's see that takes care of that I'd like to get that resolved but I had uh, yeah the uh, the culvert under the uh, Upham Road is that uh, is sized properly to handle the future? What is going to happen there if you, uh, you know, going forward, I realize you're not going to touch it till the salamanders have walked on, but what's going to happen there? Is that going to be upgraded in some way? Is it going to, capacity going to increase? Is it going to change the pitch? What's going on? The current pipe, the DPW has asked that we replace in kind the 15 inch RCP. Uh, the roadway shows no signs of, of flooding and it actually is fully silted in and there's still not much flooding. The area that contributes to that wetland is not very big, um, so we don't expect to have to upgrade that pipe any further. The water doesn't come around, does, it's just the water that's coming uh, to the south mostly. And yep, and I expect that that wetland was actually created by um, the construction of that culvert. And, and over construction time of what of that culvert oh okay. it, it was it's an ex, it's a small drainage way and and over time I think with lack of maintenance on the culvert and the culvert maybe not being constructed at the proper elevation it's backed up water creating that one what's yeah. the history of the culvert when was it put in probably 
probably was gone most, maybe a hundred years ago. You got to come up to the microphone to talk. Uh, I'll talk for him. Maybe roughly about a hundred years ago. Okay. Um, as far as you can remember, how long has it been blocked up? I, I don't know about that. So the reason for asking all that is that a, a past culvert, if it had been approved as part of some site plan or some subdivision, would have contemplated your having your drainage onto your neighbor's land. But this is going to be a new offshoot onto your neighbor's land because it's been, although there's a pipe buried there, it hadn't been a culvert for anything in recent memory. Many years. Yeah. So this will be a new rainwater outfall onto your neighbor's property when you clear out that culvert. It's fairly typical for towns to clear out culverts all the time. Um, we can't predict or, or, or design for lack of maintenance. This is a drainage way. Um, it goes down to it. Actually, a stream is formed on the east side. You'll see some line work near the owner's signatures. There's a stream that leads down to the Sauhegan River. I, I don't doubt that you don't plan or design for lack of maintenance, but what you do have is a subdivision that needs to assure you're not going to increase flow off of your property, and if you unblock that culvert, you will. There's, cul there's culverts around the whole state that have 75% blockage, 50% blockage. We design two pipes that are at full capacity. That was the reason that I was asking how long ago was this put in there, because if it was put in subject to some relatively modern site plan where the design had been calculated and worked out, that'd be a different story. But this is a functionally never been a, 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 site plan. a a site plan or a functioning culvert no, in anybody's memory. Say. Right. It's I mean it's a typical culvert around any of these old streets in Merrimack. Well, except that this one's completely blocked up, and and your neighbor is about to get a surprise. It it will be a it will be a surprise. It won't be a surprise. First of all, there's not a lot of water there, and it'll be, it'll be cleared at a time where it's not raining. It's not conflicting with any storms. Um, there's no, it'll, it'll, there's a stream behind it um, to take flow. Streams have large capabilities um, to take this type of flow. There's not that much water backing up there. But you're essentially creating a new culvert functionally with this subdivision. And directing I, I your drainage off site. Right. I disagree. The, the drainage has been this way for hundreds of years. It, 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 it has it, been just this because way, and this way hasn't. is that the, your water is not leaving your site now, and it's going to when this project is over. Right. If, if water is blocked up for a week, it doesn't mean we have to redesign all the culverts. I mean, nope. this, this, this could have been... This is a week, though. This is 100 years. We don't know if it's been blocked up for 100 years, and it's, and it's not our responsibility to maintain this culvert either. It was the town's responsibility. No, and it's your responsibility as a part of your subdivision plan to show that you're not increasing the water flow. And we're not the increasing the water flow. We will not increase the water flow. We will not increase the water flow to that man's property during any peak storm. Not sure if I, I'm I not sure I'm on the page with you. That, <laughs> <laughs> I hear you say it, but I'm not sure I'm on the same page with you. Uh, does anyone else have comments or questions about that or anything else? The reason it's silted up is because it doesn't have enough pitch to clear itself, right? Mm. And there's you're going other to put reasons, it in yeah. with the same pitch that you've got now. Is Correct. that your plan? Yes. So it's going to silt up again, right? Not if it gets proper maintenance. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anybody's well, digging it up. You just said we weren't, you weren't responsible for properly maintaining it. So it's it's a, well, it's a town road. The, the town is the town is responsible. Okay. Other comments or mm. questions? <clears throat> other. Other comments. Um, the are you taking a 25-foot uh, setback from the center line of this road for right-of-way dedication? That was a comment by DPW. We take no exception to that. We will all the way down. Yep, including around the cul-de-sac. The uh, turnaround. Around, yep. the, around the cul-de-sac. The turnaround. <laughs> uh, the, tur the turnaround is actually an easement, but we'll we'll um, we'll go around the right-of-way. Okay, I, I want enough room to actually turn around. I want a place where a snowplow can turn around. That's my concern back there. Um, one other question I had had to do with sight lines from the driveway. The lot that's um, to the uh, to the west, um, with one that skirts around the dri long driveway. Yep. Of the sight lines looking out of that driveway. Have you looked at that? Yep, that's actually on the pl 
the the lot that's furthest west, right? Yes. Yep. The plan that I gave you yeah. is at the bottom half there. There's a site distance profile. Oh. Okay. And this meets the uh, the DPW's request. It does, huh? Okay. I'm surprised. Okay. Okay. That's all I have right now, Mr. Chairman. Okay. okay. Other comments or questions? Yeah. Desiree. <coughs> um, I, I apologize that I'm not I'm not following where the new road or driveway is. You have up them coming down. Is it the little like the little dashed like parts that come off the end of up them? Is that that what you're talking about? Like the where you have the the new mm -hmm. gravel going in and then the regrading that you're talking about? Correct. Yep. And w which side of it are you saying is going to be two to one? Versus the three to one, like that's the culvert. That's the far that's side. Back by the culvert, and the property owner's site will be three to one. The site that's to the abutters would be two four to one. Four B lot. Somebody's proposing. One thirteen. One thirteen. Culvert is way up here. Oh. So we're, that's so that's on Upham. Nope. Yeah. Right. Oh. Right here where this water goes through. Gotcha. Thank you. Anyone else with comments or questions? Are there abutters or interested citizens who wish to weigh <coughs> in? Please, sir, come forward. I am um, David Bauer, 97 Wilson Hill Road. Uh, I have the bare mailbox out there if anybody knows where that is, but it's directly across from, can I go over and? You can, but take, a mic take the one. microphone with you. Directly like across. a rock star. Directly across from the proposed driveway. Yes, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, this, this is my lot right here. And on either side of my lot, I have, uh, there's the sluice pipes coming across the road, <coughs> which, are, which creates these wetland pieces. Are we talking about putting a driveway in this way? Yes. Yes. So the only dry spot, this is a sluice pipe here, this is a sluice pipe here, which is a, it's a wet area. There's this mound of dry land, which is not flush with the road. So, I mean, that whole thing would have to be excavated out and then somehow avoid or put a bridge over the rest of the wetlands to get down to the usable part of the property down here. I guess my question is, instead of disturbing all this area, and again, this the lot next to me is owned by the town of Merrimack, and years ago, I've already spent a couple thousand on my own to protect that from being sold at auction because it was wetland and designated a green area. So I'm a little, I've been here 30 years, I'm a little protective of the wetlands and the state of the road, you know, scenic road, that sort of thing. Um, so I, I guess I'm just wondering, that, that doesn't seem to me like that's the best way, if somebody looked at this lot, that that's the best way to come through this little hump to get sure. to the buildable portion of this lot down here. Has anybody thought about doing an easement or something like that off a of greater road into this property to, you know, every, every other lot down here is coming off of Upham Road. It seems to me that it would make more sense of putting some sort of an easement coming into this so we don't have to even disturb any of the wetlands up here. I mean, if you look at that, it's all, everything's all wetlands. Mm -hmm. It's that now, one we understand, piece. and you've hit on exactly what the applicants proposed. That's what they were handing out to us when they got here: is to put the driveway right where you had pointed. So oh, we've right got here? that. No, 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 no. no. Where you, right through the wetlands. Talking. There you go. That's but, what they're proposing. And what I'm saying is, it's like this is this is like an island. No, I understand. I understand all the geography. So okay. here's the way that this works from the planning board standpoint. Okay. If the applicant were to propose a, a easement across one of his other lots to get there, we would. Uh, assess whether that met our regulations and okay. pass judgment on it. Um, if the one that he has proposed that goes to the wetlands meets our regulations, we pass judgment on that. 
okay. it isn't our place to tell tell him that he's got to pick between I, two I, lawful I, I, choices. I fully, un I fully understand that, and I'm not an environmental engineer. But I can tell you, I mean, <coughs> just looking at this drawing here, this is wetland, this is wetland, this is wetland. It all comes together. How do you get a road? You're going to have to you're going to have to dig this hump out. Right, I mean, it's a it's 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 a high hump. That's the only thing that's left there because the water for hundreds of years has run on either side of that hump. Understood. So you're cutting a hump. It just doesn't make any sense to me. If if, if you know the conservation commission has looked at this and you're trying to protect wetlands, this is a protected wetland place. I don't know. I, I don't know why we wouldn't be looking at, at other alternatives to get into the usable piece of the property here. Yeah. We don't right. tell the applicant to look Thank at other alternatives if he's got a lawful solution on paper, and that's the one that he chooses. Well, I guess well, that becomes part of the question. Yes, no question. Um, is he within the setbacks and all of that? And that's what why the applicant has handed us this tonight to take under consideration, which shows that he's got a 14-foot driveway in a space that's three times the width between the wetland setbacks. Well, well not between the setbacks. I, don't, I, I don't mean, actually, driveways that, don't have to. I don't sit. see how that works, yeah. though. Well. So I, I, don't want, I don't necessarily want you to have to look at it here if you want to take it. No, I know. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, this was not available. I've been to yeah. the town twice just trying to find out what was going on here. I understand. Take that yeah. copy and, okay. and have a chance to look it over, see if anybody else wants to make some public comments. And if you want okay. to make another one after that, okay. go ahead. All right. Thank you. Bob, can yes. we have him sign in? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Don't forget to sign in on that clipboard. Thank you, Robert, for reminding me. Is Upland Road a, a town road now? Yes. That that portion of it? Yes. Okay. Class 5, according it's to the It's a class applicants. 5 road, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So is Wilson Road. Class 5 is a big group. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. No question. Okay, does any other abutter or citizen wish to weigh in on this application? Okay, well, I'm going to hold the public hearing open to let this gentleman have a chance to look at the plan while we ask and answer some other questions. Now, one of the things that the, the gentleman had raised was this area where the driveway goes between the um, two wetlands. Now, your driveways are permitted to be within the setbacks, but they're not allowed to impact the wetlands themselves, correct? Correct. And so you've got 14 feet on either side of the pavement before you get to actual wetland, but you're within the 25-foot wetland setbacks. Yes. Okay. Have those wetlands been delineated recently? Yep. Within the last few months. Within the last few months? Yep. Um, by a wetland scientist and all that. Guy. Yep, Tom Sokolovsky. Yeah. Good guy. So the area where you're going to be doing the hammerhead is that shown on the plan up here? The pink I can't really tell yeah. from here. Yep. And there's a there's also a plan in the set. Yep. What page in the plan set? What page? Yeah, I never saw it. It's the shoreland protection impact plan. What page? Sheet 9. Page 9, officially. And you'll see the easement, and you'll see the, the gravel that we are proposing. So the dark shaded area in the right-hand panel is the area where you tend to add gravel? It's not exactly a hammerhead shape, but I guess if, as long as there's room for the trucks to turn around. That is, that is the area we're proposing to disturb within the shoreland. Okay, so what are you going to put there? It's a, it's a gravel drive. Gravel so I see the gravel driveway. I'm not getting a picture Where's of the, the turnaround. Where's the truck going to drive? Where's the... So on this sheet here? Yeah. yeah. On, the, on the right side. The, um, this is Upham Road. Yeah. Could you step aside a little yeah. bit? Sorry. You? 
The truck comes in here, pulls in, onto the pulls private back. Driveway. Pulls into a private driveway. Nope, no, it's with it's fully just, within easement. The easement goes see. all the way back up to here. So that exists today, and you're not disturbing that. Nope, the, there's a driveway there today. We are we are disturbing it. We're going to bring it up to DPW standard um, with gravel thicknesses and the and the widths required. Um, I can get a fire truck and I can get a snow truck, a uh, uh, plow truck, up here, backed in, and then out. And that's all that that's all the DPW asked of us. Okay, that's the part we couldn't see. Was I understand? I got you now. Does anyone else have comments or questions about this configuration of the road? Well, yeah, Mr. Like Chairman, to, I'm, I'm not happy with that configuration. I'd like to talk to DPW. I don't know why they settle for something like that when we have cul-de-sacs everywhere else in town on dead end roads. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I've certainly seen the hammerheads at the end of driveways, <coughs> but not at the end of a public road. Yeah, that's a different matter. Ah, uh, Mr. Chairman, what worries me, and I'm not trying to criticize the uh, Conservation Commission. That long driveway is, in, is right on top of wetlands. And given the fact that, I don't know, we can't control what the applicant does once it's being constructed, I'm not sure how that, that should be allowed because if anybody starts pouring salt on that long driveway to 114, that salt is gonna end up in the wetlands. And I'm very unhappy with, I'm unhappy with the whole thing because, you know, the, we can't stop. I mean, we can, if it was an industrial site or something else, we could say no snow or green snow plow. But you can't do that on a private site. And it's my belief that 99%, I'm sure, salt is going to end up in those wetlands, and I'm dead against it. I think the driveway's got to come in from a different direction simply because it's the only way to control not getting salt into the, uh, the wetlands area. I think there's nothing that stops the applicant from chucking a bag of salt in his wetlands if he wants to. I mean, if we're going to sort of worry about residential sites that way, we will never um, get done. Yeah, but, our this tails is, on that this, but this is a serious traversing right across wetlands areas. I know he's just avoiding the wetlands. No um, question. They, but he's that, that's where his road access is for that lot, and that's why he chose that. Is that driveway supposed to be paved, or is that one going to be gravel too? That this is just conceptual. I mean, once they sell the lot, you know, it's it's up to the the owner to to yeah, decide at that point. So. Hang on, we'll get back to you in a second. Let's have some more discussion about this. Um, so, the thing is that if it was unpaved, then nobody's going to salt it because if you salt unpavement, you end up just with, wasting time. You end up with mud. You end up with mud. Um, but if it's a paved way through there then somebody may be interested in salting it, although who knows, there's lots of people that, that deal with their residential driveway without putting salt on them, me included. Um, that might. Yeah, but that's it. But I think your driveway, Mr. Chairman, is a little bit shorter than that one. No, no question, but I chuck it off the side with a snowblower the same way this guy's gonna. Um, so, or a plow or one way or another. He's gonna um, right into this. So, anyway, <coughs> I'm, kind of stuck on the turnaround thing at the end of Upham Road. I don't, I don't like the hammerhead thing any more than Nelson does. I want to hear more from DPW about why they think that's the way to go. I also want to hear more from DPW on this culvert situation and what they think of it yeah. being a blocked up culvert and was it ever designed right in the first place and replacing it with something in kind. Um, I both those. And, yes. and also, Mr. Chairman, the fact that the uh, Community Development Director led you and I, and I believe Mr. Disco, to believe that Upham Road was going to be paved. You know, it did affect the way I was yeah. thinking, and that, you know, it's not, it's not that he was um, trying to confuse the process at all. I think it's just a misunderstanding, but nevertheless, in my, my look at it, I thought it was going to be a paved road, which is easier to manage and deal with. Um, so Kyle has probably asked for the four to one slopes, and you're asking for a waiver of those from three to one or two to one. Um, does he know that you were going to ask for those waivers? Mm -hmm. he, he's been um, in email correspondence. He's actually the one that asked that I ask for the waiver. Okay. Um, he, he recommended that he thought he need, that I needed it if I wanted to go elsewhere. I talked with Tim, I talked with Jillian, and they thought because it was an existing road and I was altering it okay. that I needed to also go for the waiver. 
So Robert, knowing that Kyle was aware that there was going to be a waiver request, did he respond to it or indicate any one way or another whether he thought, because typically he comes fairly strongly to object to them when he doesn't want us to. If he did, I was not unfortunately copied on it. So I'm pulling the file to see if there's anything written that's here. DPW okay. did make comment and that wasn't a part yeah. of theirs. So I know that we're asking a lot of questions that are relatively tough about the driveways in Upham Road. Um, and I forgot to sort of preface all of that by saying the idea of creating a subdivision here seems perfectly reasonable to me. I don't have any, you know, big right. problem with the overall concept. We're talking about how we iron out some little logistical details. So I yep. don't want to lead anyone to believe that there's somehow a disaster in the works here with the approach to subdivision. I think generally speaking, it's fine. It's just figuring we can, out. Um, we can talk to Kyle about the cul-de-sac. Um, like, like I said before, cul-de-sacs are, are huge. Um, I don't know if this is what Kyle wants at the end of this road. Um, I know that the town has proper pro protocol to relieve these clogged culverts so that there isn't just a sudden surge. Um, I think Kyle can speak to that um, and how we can either word it on the plans of how they take it down in stages so that the water is, is relieved all at once. No, I, I don't have any question about whether that can be managed, but I still think that what you've got here is a functionally new rainwater outflow from your property as a result of the subdivision and that requires you to do some engineering to control that outfall um, and I think that's where I'm leaning to tell you you got to go I think the town would would recognize that this this or the DPW recognizes this is clogged and that there's a chance that it could wash away the road um, and that they would likely want it to be maintained immediately um, so I don't know if that can be done and then we're this is just no and void or well but you know, although those things are all possibilities if the town was particularly concerned about having it maintained immediately it could go out there tomorrow it's right. a culvert in a town road yeah, exactly um nelson did you have a comment i think that i think there may be some design issues here that's what bothers me and it may be this is the opportunity to straighten it out or make it flow it shouldn't silt in if it's properly designed we we can look to increase the slope on it for um for sure that's fine we have to replace the culvert completely um, yeah. I can make it the, the minimum required slope that, that we usually um, require. I, if you've got the but the, the flow off market. site, I mean, I can't, I can't do anything about that. It's, it's an existing wetland. I, you know, it's, it, it yeah. exists today. It's supposed to exist and, and function at full capacity. I mean, it's just, that's just the way that we, we design it. But things. it infiltrates as it sits today because it doesn't go through the pipe. I think there is there is some there's a stream on the other side of it, so that stream has to be fed somehow, but not through an open pipe. So it's infiltrating underground. I don't know if you get that much infiltration through a wetland. Um, typically, the wetland is is well, it's either flowing on the surface or it's not. I mean, or or that it's not fully clogged at all times. You know, it's just this this one situation where it's clogged this spring, but last spring it wasn't clogged. You know, this is this is typical with old. You know, just culverts that are that are not maintained constantly. I don't know. Um, I have to sort of think that one through a little bit and see whether anybody else agrees with me. First of all, because maybe nobody does. No, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, do you know who the neighbor is on the budding side on this side of the road? Do you know who your uh, better is on the other yeah. side? I'm sorry. Either come to the microphone and introduce yourself, or. I'm Richard Hazen. Thank um, you, Mr. Hazen. There is water flowing through that culvert. It's not flowing like it should be. I can take pictures of it if you need that there is water coming through. There's a, on the opposite side over there, there's a big vernal pool there right now. Then it goes into another little stream, goes to another big vernal pool, and it goes down another stream that takes it all the way to the road. Okay. That so nobody can build actually on that other side. There's there's too many vernal pools. <coughs> that that makes sense, and maybe pictures are a solution, or maybe a site visit's a solution yeah. for the board to go have a look with their own eyes yeah. and see what's going on. But the initial question, you you know who your neighbor is? Yes, Bob Grasso. Okay, um, I assume obviously by virtue of the normal notice process that he got notice of this proposal mm -hmm. and application. Did he make any inquiry in the town? Result of it? Uh, people came into the office. I have no idea who they were. So I, I can't tell you if that gentleman showed up or not. Okay. May well have been our other. I was there a couple times. <laughs> okay. Let's pause for a second and let 
I forgot your name. Dave. Dave, come on back up to the microphone and tell me what you think now that you've had a chance to look at that plan a little bit. I, 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 I'm looking at the plan. It looks to me like that's what, a 600 some foot driveway? Is Dave, you're not quite close enough to that microphone or it's oh, not turned on. It's so, on? There yeah. it is, good. All right, so I, I guess I'm still questioning the amount of wetlands that that driveway is going, going over to get to the back of the lot there. Um, again, the green area, which is owned by the town, there's, it's, it's wet. I've lived there 30 years. It's wet all year round. That's why they designated a green area on the, uh, on the tax map. So there's actually a sluice pipe on either side of my property that goes into that, and then there's another sluice pipe on the other side of the green area that comes across the road too. But those two main things are what form the form the wetlands going down through there. So I guess are we tonight? Is this being approved for a buildable lot with a driveway coming off of Wilson Hill Road, or is this just a conceptual approve sure. approve so a lot, a building lot that somebody could? potentially build on in the future and then at that point in time somebody's going to actually take a look at the wetland situation before you know before building is actually done on this lot so the answer lies somewhere in between um, the applicant is asking for conditional final approval of his subdivision plan and if that's granted then that's the last approval that he'll need to sell this lot and have somebody build on it right if the person that buys that lot says, hey, I don't want to build my driveway through the wetland. I would like another way to do it. There really isn't another solution for that. That's, that what, I'm lot that's, why, that's what I'm trying to prevent at this point in time. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with the green area that the town owns. They were going to put it up for auction. Once it's sold and somebody spent 135 grand for it, they would expect that they'd be able to build on it. You know, so yep. that's all I'm trying to do right now is to no, have I get everybody it. You don't, you don't have to convince me of that. Now, the okay. applicant's obligation, though, and he's got a certified wetland scientist that have delineated the wetlands, and at least what he's showing on paper with a licensed professional behind it is that he can fit between the wetlands and comply with our regulations. With, with this driveway going in yeah. the way yeah. it yeah. is. Yeah. Now, if there's I reason to believe that I would find that, that hard to believe true. myself. I, I would welcome to take it just a drive by there and, and look at where we're looking at putting in a driveway there. I, I don't so see it. That's the other part of the answer, which is sort of the why I gave you this is a different part. The board may decide to take final action tonight. The board may decide to continue it and get some of the feedback that we've discussed from DPW um, and all of those things. So today is not the final, but it's not conceptual. He's asking for approval okay. of this. I mean, I, so. I, I, I am not. You know, I don't want to deny the hazens of anything. We've been neighbors for, you know, 30 years. Uh, I, I, I understand, you know, the, what they're trying to do. I'm just asking that we try to preserve the wetlands and look at other alternatives to come into that property. And it just makes Question. sense to me to come off of Upham Road rather than Wilson Hill Road. So plus I, it's a bad I, honestly it's a bad turn there. We've already we've already had two houses up the road that were put in. There was a five five subdivision lot that was approved by this by a planning board here in Merrimack and the the deal was at the time of the approval they were going to straighten out Wilson Hill Road. And that's never that. It's that's not an approval that's occurred in my well, memory. That, okay. Well, that's never happened. So, hang on. Let me, happened, let me cut you off a but, little bit. And okay. I don't actually cut, cutting you off isn't the right yeah, word. I, I want to focus you on understand. things that we can we can understand. consider. We don't, as a board, redesign the plan for the gentleman and say, "Hey, wouldn't it be better if you do it this way?" And I that's understand. what you're asking us to do. You think that there's well, a better way to do it, but I, this, my, hang on. I'm let, sorry. let me do the talking for a little while. Yes. You're asking us to redesign it and say, hey, I know a better way. Why won't you do it the better way? And this board cannot go there and do that. And so we take the application that's before us. We decide if it meets the regulations or not. And if it does, then that's the way we vote. If we find that it doesn't meet the regulations, then the application, then the applicant can go solve that problem. So I appreciate fully that you, you have a sense that there's a better way to do it. But I 
you, you're spinning your wheels and telling the board that because that's not what we no, do. And, and that was not my intent to try to try to you know indicate how somebody should do something. All um, I just want to make sure that somebody's looked at these wetlands and that maybe you know my words will be heard and somebody can go back and maybe take a, take a look at it to see if maybe there's some validity to some of the things I'm saying. Again, I've been there 30 years, so. So no, I do know the lay of the land, so to speak. That I understand, and that's a yeah. that's a, a welcome comment to the yeah. board. This board may decide between now and then to either have a formal site visit or to have informal opportunities where people go take a look. Right now, what's in front of me though is a certified wetland scientist has not that long ago gone out and taken a look, and I have nowhere near the level of skill that a certified wetland scientist does. Um, and okay. so, unless there's a second certified wetland scientist that says, no, nope, first guy got it all wrong, um, there isn't any reason for me personally to believe in Understand. anything other than what's been shown to me on the paper. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I know that we had asked for other interested abutters, and there weren't any before, but I'll offer it again if anybody wishes to weigh in, and if not, we'll close the public hearing. Close the public hearing then and then open up the floor for the board to discuss uh, any of the questions that we've already chewed on a little bit or perhaps if anybody has in mind a potential course of action. Yeah, Nelson. I have one more question. I wanted to know if the wetlands here are flagged in the field. Yeah, they should be. Like I said, they, it was, it was yeah. uh, delineated a few months ago and picked up by survey, so yeah. unless someone has taken so them the down. So the flagging should still be there. I can't, yeah. I can't guarantee that every flag is there, but usually they last yeah. about a year. Yeah. When you say a few months ago, I mean, we're not that, a few months ago was kind of the middle of winter. Um, um, it was an area, actually, it's on the plan. Uh, it's on the plan. I the plan it says September of 2016. September, so. Okay, so that's not that long ago, but it's still more than a couple months ago. Yeah, I think the, I think they're good for about five years, the delineations, as long as the flags hold up. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have any reason board. to think that the wetlands have significantly changed in place, so. Right. Um, wetland scientists aren't just looking for wet, they're looking for all the rest of the science that goes with it. Um, I do want to have some more feedback from the DPW both on, on all of the questions that we discussed with the culvert, with the side slopes, with the turnaround, um, and know more, more about what their thought process was for what they've asked you to do. Um, ultimately, I do put a lot of weight in what Kyle and Don put forward, and mm -hmm. so but I just want to make sure that I fully understand it and that we've all considered those same things. So my inclination is to say, you know, let, let's find an opportunity for this board to get that input before we make a final decision on this application. It may well be that in the time that uh, that, that occurs, these questions that seem kind of confusing to me now will become clearer with what's the status of the culvert? Is it actually kind of blocked but not completely blocked? Because that's a whole different cat than a completely silted in culvert. Um, and then uh, whether Kyle has some other solution for how you could have the four to one slopes or whether it's purely a matter of wetland impact or not, if the Upham Road is shifted further over in the e within the same easement onto towards your, your property or to your client's property, does that give you the room that you need to do those slopes and all of those kinds of questions which may be the case or may not, I don't know. We do have a picture of the culvert? Picture of the culvert. Yeah, it's within that. Uh, in the yeah. park. Yep. Which side of the road, of Upham Road is the picture from? The west side. So this is your client's side? Correct. So Vernal Pool 1 is the only one that's near this culvert. That's yeah. mm -hmm. this one. Okay. I'm sure everybody's got I'm the passage for this. Where is Vernal Pool 1? It is figure 1 and figure 2. I mean, I see the picture. No, it's, it's on the Where the plan? On the open road was the... Um, it, within the pictures, if you go to the back, there's a, indic there's a guide, the last the page, guide. that shows you where the Vernal Pools are. That's where they are. The pool one is the one that's backed up. That's the one that's backed up, yeah. 
and it's and it feeds. And the worry is whether the warm out of the water is going to flow. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, anyway, I've, I've kind of indicated what my thoughts were. I um, don't uh, speak for the whole board. Mr. Chairman, I have to say your comments are the same as mine. Um, I feel we need to know more. Uh, I think we have some questions. There is some confusion, certainly in my mind, as to what's going on. And I personally would like to think that if everybody else is satisfied with qu asking questions, I'd like to make a motion that we, def we put, uh, table this matter for a period of probably two weeks to the next meeting, which is on June, June the 6th, I think. Uh, at this time f to enable us to get some answers to the, some of the issues that we're still having. I certainly don't feel comfortable to pass this matter at this time with the information that I've been given tonight. Yeah. Just one second. Is there a second for Alistair's motion? I will second Alistair's second motion. By Nelson. Okay, now, wanna, what, are, what have you got to offer for us? So what, you, what are your thoughts? The, um, w we don't mind um, discussing the, the turnaround and the side slopes and how to, I guess, deal with the culvert situation with the DPW. Are you, are you looking to, for us to ask the questions and then provide answers in writing? Will you an, ask them the questions and then provide us the answers? How will that um, that, conversing? That's a great question, and that's the next thing that I wanted to um, sort of entertain before we voted on this motion is clarify exactly what we're doing within the next right. two weeks and who's doing it. And, um, and the normal process is that Robert's got some notes and he has some contact with Kyle and either they will have some oral That's feedback fine. from them that they could provide to us or something in writing that something comes back writing. to us that says uh, what Kyle thinks of these issues. It also may be that we should discuss as a board whether anyone's interested in going out and looking at it yourself, either as a formal group site visit mm -hmm. on a particular day, and that's kind of hard to schedule. Or whether everybody want to, that's interested wants to go, have, you know, drive down Upham Road. It's a public road. Go have a look. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious. I want to go look at it. Um, I want to see what that culvert looks like in practice. I might even go try and turn around in that turnaround. There's a tree in there right now. There's a tree. Well, all right. I won't turn around. In the so don't hit it. <laughs> um, my, my, Mr. Chairman, if you would like me to elaborate, I might make a motion that we ask the information that we have requested be communicated by Mr. Robert Price to the, the Public Works Department, both Dawn and, and Kyle, and ask for them to give us comments. But obviously, if you want to talk to them to help them put together a comment back to us, and I personally think I'd like to see it in writing, mm -hmm. yeah, um, so that you know, that you, and he, you, and he, you and they can get together, bang, sort it out, and I'd like to see written comments from Public Works saying they are happy with the issues of the culvert and the hammerhead and... So specifically, Sorry. Robert, what I'd like to know from Kyle or Don, whoever it is that's the appropriate person to respond to this, is um, are they satisfied with a hammerhead instead of a, a regular cul-de-sac? And anything that they'd offer to expand on why, they're, why that's acceptable here where it typically isn't? Um, with respect to the culvert, I'd like to know whether the re replacing it in kind is the appropriate course or whether it requires any improvement in design. And I'd like to know if they have any sense about whether there's any flow through the culvert at all as it stands today. And, and Mr. Chairman, if there is a flow, where it's going? Yeah. <coughs> Desiree? Well, I can answer yeah. that. Yeah, it goes in. It goes into the vernal pool. It's on the other side. Well, let's assume it goes anywhere. Desiree, what do you got? Sorry, I was waiting for Robert to catch up with the writing. Um, just, just one question. On the sheet that was handed out tonight, the 1-1 one -one sheet that does show the driveway, Yes. this was just issued. This wasn't something Conservation Commission saw on Monday or something. I, I, we are concerned with effects so, on, like, uh, Properties made that could potentially not be useful to their future owners, right? Like uh, the 13 unit subdivision that was going to be up on the hill that the concern was water supply for all those houses.
being available on those sites. Our, our concern was that also potential effect down the hill, but making sure that those houses were provided for. This again, if if this if this is okay to build like this through here, like the driveway and this access, if this if this is actually oh, it would work, then that's fine. But I just if that if that can't fit there, then it's going to be real tough to stick it somewhere else. Yeah, like you were saying. So no I question just, at all. No question at all. So here's sort of what I think about with the approach. And if anybody disagrees with me, have at it. Um, I'd love to hear it. Um, so what the applicant is showing us on paper clears the wetlands and shows him a place where he can lawfully build his driveway. If that's different on the ground, that's a whole different matter. Somebody point that out. Let's go look at it. If, if what's on paper doesn't match what's on the ground, all bets are off. Maybe it doesn't fit, maybe it does. But in terms of what the applicant's showing on paper, he satisfied the requirement that he's not in a wetland and he's allowed to build his driveway where he's showing it, which is kind of within the setbacks from a wetland because we allow that for driveways. But your intuition could be well right, and I think that's what this gentleman is saying, is maybe the real world doesn't quite look that way with your eyes as it does on paper. And maybe that's a reason for everybody to go have a look. Or something. That's why I asked if they've been flagged. Yeah. yeah. And if they are flagged, then we can all go have a look and say, okay, I can see that flag and that flag, and they're 45 feet apart, um, which is roughly what the plan's showing. So they're 42 feet apart. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate uh, it. If, but again, I'm not sort of sitting here like a dictator. If you disagree, <laughs> let me have it. Um, Nelson, did you have a comment or question? No, I'm Anything also. to add that we want to hear from Kyle or anybody else? No, I think um, discussions with Kyle. Other than clarifying the information yeah. given to you and I by the Community Development Director regarding the paving of Upham Road. Yeah, see if you can run down why there was an impression that it was paved when it, it doesn't appear to be what the applicant intends to do. Was there also a question about the slopes, whether Kyle was truly comfortable with a two-to-one slope or whether he... Yes, I think yeah, that, that is a question. Get him to yeah. amplify yeah. on that situation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so make sure there's some comment on that, Robert, and find out if Kyle um, has any particularly objections that he'd like to voice to the applicant's request for a waiver, and the waiver would be three to one on one side and two to one on the other. The usual request or the it's usual concern is that the maintenance along a steeper slope puts him and his equipment at risk. Yeah. But I don't know whether this requires any maintenance. I don't know that it's been getting any. <laughs> so. Anything else that we think that we want to hear? Is that satisfactory in terms of the explanation as to who will do what over the next couple of weeks? Absolutely. I think most of it is on us to figure out with a communication between the departments. Yeah, and I'll make sure I reach out to, um, to Kyle and, and try to get this thing moving. Yep. Um, I, I think the request for two weeks, um, like I prefaced, I got a baby coming, so I, I may not be here in two weeks. <laughs> so if we can maybe go just a month, um, that'll give us time to meet with Kyle, talk with Kyle, revise plans for you guys, address DPW comments so that we're yeah. clean coming in here That's and um, we the have next everything one will be June, 20th. June 20th. June 20th is perfect. Well then I'll modify my motion at your request to allow you time to baby f do the baby <laughs> feeding and the ch diaper changing to June the 20th at 7 p.m. in this room. Thank you. With Mr. no Secretary further motion. The change in motion? The I amended. won't approve that change. Yeah, the amended motion. Is there any other discussion regarding the just a question, does the board want to look at the wetland or not? I mean, if we do, we ought to set it up with them. Yes. Do, does anybody want a formal site visit or does anybody want to look? I mean, I, anybody can go look on your own. You don't need to ask permission to do that. Yeah. Um, tends, looking on my own tends to be things that I can do from a public way. I don't tend to go romping on somebody's property <laughs> without, without it being more formal yeah. than that. But I just bring it up to ask. I'm neutral. I, I'd be more than willing to give anyone a site walk if anyone's interested. The Sauhegan River. You, you can't say that, so you've got other, may have other issues. Yeah, you're gonna have a baby. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll work, we'll work around it. These I've got people in the office. Um, All right, the Sauhegan River area is beautiful. If you want to go take a look down yeah. there, um, it's an I recommend place, it. Place, isn't it? I, very, I recommend the old it. Mill site. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, there so, was one other thing. I didn't know. Yes, if, please. Um, if you, if there was any chance that maybe we could look at one of the waivers, 
Which one? Just so the, uh, the sidewalk one along Wilson yeah, Hill Road. Yeah, you're going to get that one. I mean, we can vote on it if you yeah. like. But Just so we can see some progress tonight. Um, <laughs> at, at the request of the applicant, I will um, table for the moment the motion to continue and let the board take up the question of the waiver. Um, I'll move that we grant the waiver for the... Turn your microphone on, please. I move that we grant the waiver for the um, sidewalk sidewalks. Yeah. Based on the fact that strict, yeah, well that one. Strict yeah, conformity would pose an unnecessary hardship to the applicant, and the waiver would not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulations. Seconded by Paul. Any discussion on the sidewalk? I think, in addition to all the reasons we've discussed about sidewalks in general, he's got so much wetland across the front that he yeah. wouldn't be able to build it anyway. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Seven zero zero. So your sidewalk is dealt with. Do you have any other waivers that you wanted us to tackle tonight? I think the other waiver requires input from, from the Kyle. things that we've talked about before. Correct. Okay. So uh, then I will remove from the table the motion to continue. Um, before we, I call for the vote. I just do want to comment, just to make sure that you guys understand. Um, generally speaking, I think that you've got a good proposal for a, for a subdivision here. I think it's just a matter of getting some technicalities ironed out. I don't want you to walk away from this thinking that those SOBs at the planning board really yeah. kind of shot me down or something like that. And I that. completely understand. Um, it's, it's a, it is a little frustrating. We did meet with Kyle on site and walked the, you know, and we thought we had a, a clear direction from him. And that's what yeah. we put on the you plan. May have. And, then, and then we didn't receive any comments back saying elsewise, so we figured we were good. But I, I understand your reservations, and, and we'll get them cleared up and, and see you in a month. That's you may have done that, and, and Kyle may be in complete, uh, completely on the same page as you. Um, the approach is unusual to what we've seen in the past, and that's what makes us say, hey, I want to make sure I understood what Kyle, <laughs> Kyle said or what he yeah. meant on those kinds of things, just because it is a little unusual to do. Uh, a hammerhead instead of a turnaround on a public road and those kinds of things. So that's really what it's about. But before we voted, I just wanted to express to you the sense that this isn't sort of a ship hitting the rocks. It's, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to steer a little bit. Scraping the button. Scraping the button? No, we're not. No, it's not. Scraping the button. All in favor of continuing to June 20th, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Seven zero zero. So we'll see you in a month. Good luck with the baby. I don't Thank know if you know if it's a boy or a girl, but one way little, or another. Little baby girl. Little baby girl. Congratulations yeah. to you. you. And it. I hope everything goes well with mom. Thanks. Okay, somewhere in my pile of stuff, I used to have an agenda. Um, Can I? Uh, here it is. Master plan. Uh, number eight is the discussion of the 2013 master plan implementation. And that has... Um, we, we divided that into a couple of parts and then a couple of things moved on us and changed and shifted. So we had a part that Tim was going to work on which involved conditional use permits and looking at some new areas. And then because Tim required some time to deal with that, Nelson was going to give us a little bit of an understanding of some sidewalk uh, issues related to conditional use permits and doing compact development. And then parts moved a little bit last Thursday night in front of, with the town council giving us the green light to go and get some help from NRPC on a bit of a broader um, study of our sidewalk situation and better understanding that will help us create a more focused sidewalk plan in general. Um, and so with that, I, don't, I know that Nelson's original idea for a presentation is kind of stale now a little. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of overtaken by events, and I think the events are really important that uh, – I'm really happy that, that it is, frankly. <laughs> but I did, I did give some handouts, and they got into your literature before the, the big change came through. But one of them was, is headed off by this document that says topics for discussion. And it lists the different items from the master plan for which the planning board has the lead. That is, they were supposed to take the first steps to make these things happen. I think you've seen this list before. A few of the things on that list are in process. They have a little uh, asterisk on them, and one of them's actually finished, which is the one about accessory apartments. And I think we've addressed that issue. Uh, then I, I did, and then I expanded that list on the next couple of pages to what the master plan actually says with regarding them so that you can get a better idea of what it is that uh, was being asked for by the master plan. Um, 
then I took these things and I th saw how many of them were very similar and overlapped each other and integrated with each other. And I thought we'd ought to consider them as, a, as groups. And so I took them, and the thir fourth page now talks to, um, it still leaves the town-wide pedestrian bike plan as it was, but beginning with um, the idea of creating village nodes on the DW Highway, and then the things that are buried in there that would probably be affected by that, that probably the first thing we might want to address as a group is what we want to do about that recommendation that's in the master plan that says uh, to um, make centers, little semi-small centers along Route 3, nodes is what they were called, and if that made sense, though, then we might treat those differently than the rest of Route 3, for example. And so that was one grouping. Another grouping was the natural resources uh, things, amending our stormwater checklist, things like that, um, minimizing the uh, disruption of natural vegetation. Those things are in another grouping that we might consider together as a, as a uh, group. And then uh, a couple more things. Um, there's business about salt, of course, that can be tackled anytime in amenities. Um, access to the Merrimack River was one in there. And um, so these were the, the sort of subgroups that I had uh, put together that I thought these things fitted together and ought to be considered. And then I thought probably a, uh, if we wanted to uh, tackle them as a board or as a subcommittee, um, that's something to be thought about and decided. But then came Thursday night last. And Thursday night last was, oh, and one other thing I handed out for you was a new uh, visual portfolio of tools for uh, making communities more livable. And it's a whole lot of neat ideas. And uh, I thought it was so good that I would pass it on. And the, the back page is upside down and all of them, but that's, <laughs> that's uh, well, anyway, Thursday night, the town council agreed that we should go ahead and, uh, with our plan to work with Nashua Regional Planning, and develop a master plan for Route 3. That was the original request that we had made. And they agreed that this was okay to do, and I was happily surprised. I dug out the statement of work that we had worked up with Nashua Regional Planning. That's in another handout that came out today or so. It's called the Nashua Regional Planning Commission in Town of Merrimack Route 3 Bicycle and Pedestrian Corridor Plan. And it has a scope of work. And um, that is what I think I would like to recommend that we proceed with to develop a corridor plan for Route 3 as something that we can probably get started on in near term and get uh, some help, we can get help from Nashua Regional Planning. I will say that the last, when we put all of this together, Bob had originally appointed a subcommittee uh, for the, uh, uh, it was called the, uh, Forgotten what the official the name. Desiree committee. What? <laughs> the what? Desiree was a Desiree. It was the Desiree. Yeah, so they, Desiree. Was De Desiree yeah, was no Desiree. no that was earlier. No, the later committee was uh, Alistair, myself, and Sebring, Jeff Sebring, were tasked to go and do this. And and, the, and uh, oh, I thought that was to Desiree review was what earlier. was in the master plan and see what it was the, to do the work that you did tonight, which kind of organized. But yeah, I, mean, I thought that was what that committee was doing. But anyway, it doesn't matter to me. We anyway, kind of committee we want. Where, where we left off was we had this statement of work all done up. Yep. And uh, what I'm recommending to the board tonight is that we proceed with this statement of work. If you want to look it over or want to think about it for a week or whatever, modify it as will. And, uh, and, uh, and I would suggest maybe there's, this was done with a subcommittee of the planning board. 
it doesn't have to be a subcommittee. It can be the whole planning board. Yeah. And uh, now that uh, nobody's going to get shot for being on the committee. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> was going to get shot for. So the one thing that I would suggest in that, uh, I certainly want to have the board consider the work plan as much as they'd want to, but I caution you in the, in the interest of editing it or amending it because that's what NRPC agreed to do. Agree. And, and if and you change it, it just, <laughs> they yes. may not be okay with that. Very good point. And we don't know if they are still agreeing with this. I mean, I have not approached them. I did call them up and tell them we got the green light but, and that we'd be back to them because okay. I didn't want to make any commitments. And Mr. But Chairman, might I also suggest we should move expeditiously in case anybody in the counts Council changes their mind. <laughs> Come on, council's a bunch of good folks. They're going to stick with us. Oh, they're nothing but good folks, but there's no yeah, question about that. But, uh, well, yeah. given that the community yeah. development director nearly had a heart attack while he was watching the program, <laughs> I think I still retain my comment. Yeah. yeah. All, All right. right, fair enough. So whatever you guys think of. One other thing to mention, I did go back and check against the person who was, remember, we got some an offer of help from a student at Plymouth State oh, College. Yes. Uh, she was going to help us uh, put this whole thing together. And unfortunately, uh, she's about to graduate, and <laughs> she found something else to do for her project. And so that's not available anymore. That doesn't mean there might not be others up the there. Yeah. And I just didn't look for others. But I did follow up uh, with you, Bob, uh, on the one that uh, she re recommended. What was her name? Laura, Laura Getz was her name. Yep, that sounds right. So that's where we are. And I guess I look to the chairman for guidance as to how we would proceed. I look to this board for guidance as to how we, they think we yeah. should proceed. I know I've got my own ideas, but. Uh, <laughs> so um, here's my thought. And again, only one, one thought. Um, Telling National Regional Planning Commission that we'd love for them to proceed with the work plan that's been designed, um, and you know, let let them go and do that mm -hmm. um, is an easy thing to accomplish, and that lets them go run in that direction. And in the meantime, whether we choose to have a committee or otherwise, let's start talking about some of these other things that are on your list of master plan yeah. to dos. Um, and then you know, it's going to take National Regional Planning Commission some time to do their work. And we'll see when it gets back. But I wouldn't necessarily think that appointing a subcommittee at this point is quite what we're ready for. Okay. But the, the reason I bring it up is in this statement of work, it talks about working with this committee. If you look at it, there's a, uh, a, 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 re, a review with the committee, and a workshop with the committee. And um, pedestrian bike work group, yes. Yes, right. yeah. So we need we can substitute the planning board for that, the whole planning board, or if you if you want, or whatever, however you'd like to proceed. But we need something, either that or a replacement for it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, I, I don't mind working as a group with the planning board if everybody else doesn't mind. But if people feel like, let's let a couple people focus on this and not put it in front of the whole planning board. Yeah. Fine, whatever. It's, it's up to the board. If they want to participate, right. I think. What? I'm not leaving. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Mr. Chairman, but let's, to speed it up, let's say we'll, we'll do the whole committee will act as, as the, the work committee group. of the whole. Okay. The committee of the whole. Well, I will then, at your request, speak to the National Regional Planning, tell them about that change. In okay. The, and uh, we'll proceed. We'll be ready to go. Sounds then good. We're we can go not back. long from hearing from Tim as to his CUP bit of the um, master plan implementation as well, and that'll kind of go hand in hand with some of these other things. The UP, uh, Tim's approach to relooking at CUPs, CUPs. and oh, CUPs. designing them differently. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah, we can tackle any of these groups if we want as a group. Again, uh, we've got the transportation, the bike plan started. And uh, we've got these others, the, the business of the uh, village nodes, the natural resources. We've got uh, amenity improvements. And, uh, yeah, so, how the board wants to go? I mean, the nodes thing kind of is consistent with what Tim could come up with as a result of the 
review of COPs because he's talking about redevelopment and a more compact footprint on VW Highway and all of that approach. Um, but there's other opportunities to look at, you know, the, like you said, the natural resources or some of yeah. the smaller bites and yeah. pieces. Um, why don't we um, hear from Tim to find out what his schedule looks like for when he plans to come back to us with this other stuff? Okay. And if it's because my memory was that it may be our next meeting or some, one of the other, the second meeting in June. Uh -huh. Actually, it would be the first because the first meeting in June is when we just deal with master plans. Yeah. We only punted it to this meeting because last meeting was so much fun. <laughs> the next one will be that could, could be. Yeah. So let's find out from Tim if he's ready to do something on June 6th. And if not, then offline you and me, Nelson, can pick out something that we can focus on for the June 6th. Good. Does that work? Okay. Everybody else satisfied with that? Sure. Desiree? Yes. Yeah, I'm satisfied with that. I have a question, though, sure. real quick. In our 11 and 12, the, that's native planning and limiting use of salt and de-icing compounds. It's pretty much what's always on Conservation Commission's comments. You, that, that's ones, how it like, became part of the master plan, is if we write it into our ordinance that everybody's required to do that, then they don't have to keep writing it in the recommendations mm -hmm. because it becomes an automatic. That's exactly what it is. Yes, that's exactly right. And, uh, and all we'd have to do is make that change to the uh, subdivision regulations. It doesn't even require zoning. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I think, Mr. Chairman, if I may, that I think the natural resource preservation is possibly where we might get the quickest bang for our buck, mm -hmm. buck in terms of getting some changes. So, yeah. and given that Tim may have something on on the village nodes, I'd like for us to think seriously about NR five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve mm -hmm. at our next meeting, at our June sixth meeting, unless Tim is ready with his. Mm -hmm. Yes, if Tim, if, if Tim wants that meeting, then we'll, we'll put, put it off in, for another four weeks. But I'm, I'm sure he'd understand if we decided that <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he could wait a little longer. Okay, that's fine with me. That makes All right. Sense. All right, so that's a plan for that. Um, I had something else on my mind with that, but it disappeared on me all of a sudden. If it comes back, so be it. Um, Thank you, Nelson, for doing all the work with yeah, the, you well. know, keeping up with this and getting us organized and on the right track for chasing some of these things down. Um, are there any other comments or questions on the 2013 master plan implementation? Okay. Now I've got to find my agenda again. Helen Myers. That brings us to discussion and possible action regarding other items of concern. Now each of you will have gotten in your packet. Uh, a request, a communication from uh, the person indicated in the agenda, Helen M. Myers, uh, for zoning ordinance changes, uh, looking to suggest that we ought to consider undertaking um, zoning ordinance changes related to the keeping of livestock um, in various areas of town and the impacts that it may have on our neighbors. I assume that that's who we have here with us. So. <laughs> Come on, come on forward. <laughs> yes, come on forward, and thank you for waiting. Um, please sign in. Let me uh, preface your comments by saying we don't normally have a public comment period in our meetings, but you've been so patiently waiting for the whole time, and I know that I've read your information, so I want to make sure that I give you the chance to tell us a little bit about what's on your mind. Okay. Um, I want to thank the board for meeting me, and what I'm proposing is Section 202 permitted use all districts general prohi prohibitation no use of any kind shall be permitted in any district if in any way would be injurious noxious and offensive by the way of odor fume smoke etc etc um, and the bo planning board shall adopt such standards that regulations as it may deem necessary in order to help ascertain conformance with the above regulations um, I have a situation that I've, I've tried to resolve and I've been unsuccessful. Um, I originally met with, uh, spoke to someone in the building department and in the health and they advised me to file a complaint with the New Hampshire Department of Agriculture regarding the odor of a manure pile that my neighbor intentionally put adjacent to our property line. And this has been going on for three years. My grandson and the neighbor kids used to play there. They can't anymore. The odor in the summertime is sometimes because of the heat, it gets really obnoxious. And um, I've 
with all the documentation that I provided you, you see that I provided a letter, addressed the area to uh, Mr. Ralph and Nancy Naples, and I filed my complaint, and the uh, New Hampshire Department of Agriculture says, well, they're disposing of the manure, the chicken manure and the horse manure properly, and that, yeah, it's going to be hot in the summer, it's going to stink, and that's life. And then um, I um, came to the town, and there are no, they have no meat to really have this guy move his pile so that it doesn't affect our quality of life. And if you choose to amend Section 202 to include specifically the placement as I placement of backyard chicken coops to maybe implement a minimum setback of 30 feet to adjacent or mutual property lines. And I'm recommending this be retroactive because if it's not retroactive, then I continue to smell manure uh, for as long as we live in Merrimack. Uh, the proper disposal or the location of manure piles uh, implement a minimum setback of 30 feet or more to adjacent or mutual property lines as to preclude any offensive by the way of odor this should be retro a retroactive code and then I went on and the New Hampshire let's see the New Hampshire Department of Agricultural Markets and Food and its best management practices for agriculture uh, has some recommendations for the amount of ag livestock and they define what livestock is and if this board makes the changes to section 202 B then the the town can address these issues with my neighbor and maybe other people have the same problem but I would I would hope that you would sincerely consider all this I provided pictures of our kids' play area, and every time I either, you know, notify the New Hampshire, um, did the complaint with the New Hampshire Department of Agriculture, the guy put a tarp on it, but you still have the smell. And I'm just really asking this board to, you know, as Merrimack grows, you need to look out for all the residents. Yep, I understand. Thank you. Does any member of the board have questions? Do you have any questions um, for me? So. Um, uh, maybe one. just one, I suppose, a question. Having read, actually, I read the letter of 15th August 2015, which you sent to the gentleman next door. Yes. Um, I'm not trying to be funny. It, no. It's obviously a... He's, it's almost like war, yes. uh, you know, nor North Korea and America. Um, <laughs> no, have, you, have you tried what I would call the, the more legal approach? I, I know if you involve attorneys, it costs lots of money. But I wondered if you've done anything to approach through that direction. Alternatively, have you done anything to approach through the public health yes, department I have. in this town? Yes, I have. I approached the Department of Health, and they have no rules or subsidence to make this guy adhere to what would be good standards. Okay. Have you contacted an attorney to see if you have any private rights that you could bring suit or something? No. Okay. Certainly, you know, nobody's sort of uh, promoting that, that you know that become the way to solve problems, but. Um, the, the challenge that I see for the board is the, 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 the biggest thing that you're asking for is the regulation that applies retroactively. And that may be the one thing that we couldn't give even if we wanted to. Okay. Um, either well, the for legislature future going, then, then can't you, you at least make those changes so that this doesn't happen to somebody else? I think the board can consider doing that. I don't know that that helps you at all, though. And I know that that's why you're here, is you wanted to have some I, information about I would about have liked some resolution, you. absolutely. Yeah. Um, so when you apply ordinances um, that, that deal with zoning or planning, mm -hmm. um, typically it's um, a, a different 
set of facts that back it up, but maybe somebody is um, using their property for a rod and gun club where they have a shooting range, right. for example, mm -hmm. and you, you create an ordinance that says you can't do that anymore in the industrial zone or the commercial zone, um, but that existing site ends up being grandfathered and they can continue to do it for as long as they want. And they, they're a, a pre-existing non-conforming use and so we don't we aren't able to do anything about that not that we're trying to get rid of rod and gun clubs or those right. ranges but it's an example of one of those situations so i think that your your abutting neighbor would not not feel any impact at all if we had passed a regulation that says we're going to deal with livestock in a particular way um, and so i'm not sure that we can get you the relief that you want through this channel then there's no relief other than, like you said, a legal relief release. Yeah, that's why I sort of thought you were at the end of your rope in terms of your choices and your options. It looks like you, from the materials you submitted, you've tried everything you can think of. I've tried everything, and, you know, your town, okay, looking under this uh, offensive way of odor, if you can't help me, at least maybe you can help somebody else if, you, if this ordinance is changed. If you say, you know, the placement of... of chicken coops such that it's the odor is not offensive to a neighbor sure so there is a complication related to that as well um, i think that if we were talking about someone like some of the applicants we had earlier that were doing some manufacturing processes or whatever that might have some chemical or odors or discharges or something like that um, there's no special statutory protections that exist that keep that person allowed to do you know some kind of a chemical exhaust through their ventilation system right. or something like that. Right. Um, but there are a list of protections in statute for agricultural uses that's as long as your arm. Um, I mean, they're really embedded into the culture of New Hampshire and how it requires that we do all sorts of things before we ever even consider regulating in, in agricultural uses. They're allowed in every zone in the state unless the, unless the zoning somehow eliminates it. For, for instance, I think Manchester limits the area, how many chickens you can have per acre. Sure. Uh, Merrimack can easily implement that too. You, you could potentially do so. Um, there's quite a lot of people around who quite highly value um, what they view as Merrimack's rural nature. Um, although we are kind of growing up as a small town, every mm -hmm. time we hear anything from a master planning viewpoint or, um, or, or approving a big apartment building or something like that, um, we have a, a, a flood of folks that come and talk about how we need to go in the other direction and preserve the rural character of it. And I think that that's where you're going to have the folks who disagree with the approach that you want to propose, mm -hmm. who say, hey, I've got a 20-acre you know, farm, and if you had, say one chicken per acre, I can only have 20 chickens on my whole 20-acre farm. Why? How could that possibly be an impact? Mm -hmm. you know, or what, however those, those numbers play out. Um, it, it ends up being something where there is just su such an overwhelming embedded support for agricultural uses that um, there's a lot of opposition to something like this. There's a lot of opposition. And, you know, I, I, I'm fortunately not in your shoes where I've got to live next to a neighbor who is not only engaged in a use that produces smells, but he's being a jerk about it. I mean, he's doing what he can to make sure that it impacts you as much as possible. And I'm thankful that I'm not in your shoes. Um, outside of that situation, the idea of supporting, I mean, all of our agricultural uses like apple picking and all of those things that we all support um, are, are easy to get behind. The local farmer's market, all of those kinds of things. Um, if I had no chickens at all, but I wanted to spread manure on my lawn to make it grow better, actually my mother-in-law did buy um, organic fertilizer that was made out of chicken poop and smelled like hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, right. so it's a tough thing to get to. With that in mind, I'll shut up for a second and see if other members of the board have any comments or questions one way or another on the subject. I think it's a tough one to get at. Um, I think that if there was an angle that could get you some relief personally, um, I'd be interested in kind of exploring that. But knowing that it isn't going to help you at all, maybe it helps somebody else down the road. I don't know if it does or if it doesn't. Um, but it would be literally a, a World War III in front of this board to consider those regulations because of the approach, the, the favorite 
the favored status of agricultural uses kind of all over the place um, makes it really a tough one for us to for, for me to Lynn I think there might be some um, validity towards designating areas where agricultural buildings whether it's a a barn or a coop or a sty or anything else um, we could delineate where setbacks for those kinds of things that would be that but would to be actually, something but to actually put something in the ordinance that says not offensive to a neighbor well you, you excuse me yeah I understand. I, you're done oh. <laughs> <laughs> to put something like that in an ordinance you can't enforce it so but I think putting in something that would delineate setbacks or, or sizes yeah. or something like that, yet yeah, I can see that that would be something that we could consider. So let me ask Robert a question for that. Um, so a chicken coop has obviously some kind of structure. It doesn't require a building permit because it's probably below 160 square feet or whatever, but even things that don't require building permits are subject to setbacks. Yes, yeah. So why isn't that an avenue of relief for this lady with respect to the coop, not the pile, but... I think it comes down to if it doesn't require a building permit, who's going to know it goes up? And well, then how do you track all of that? And yeah. it's, it's, there's, there's no way to really enforce anything like that. Well, it, certainly there isn't any way to, to police it and go looking around people's yards to see what they did. But once a neighbor comes forward and says, hey, uh, you know, Alistair built his shed right on my property line, shed, chicken coop, pool filter, whatever it is, why isn't there an ability for the town to go out and say, Hey, sir, you built it. You know, you got to honor the setbacks with your and that bike the, shed or anything else. And that, yeah, at that point, we have an avenue, the service request avenue, where they come in, they file the complaint, Hello but it's there. dealt with on a complaint basis only. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Well, it seems like she's more than happy to make a complaint yeah. for you. Could is that something yeah. your department could respond to in terms yeah. of just setbacks? Yeah. It's, it's, if the chicken coop is deemed as a structure, then it would apply setbacks would apply to it. At which point, we could say, hey, it's too close to the property line depending on what zone it's in and then we direct the property owner to relocate it or take it down okay so i think i remember when i put my own shed on my property the rear lot setback was was much bigger than the front it was like 60 feet from the back setback um and if i don't know which side this guy is on from you but that'd be a lot of distance if yes. the back line is the one that's the problem the side lines i think were 20 feet and the front it doesn't lot solve your pile i know yeah. but but you've got you yeah. You'll take what you can get, right? Mm -hmm. Take what you can get. Yeah. Yeah. Nelson? Yeah, I had a slightly different recollection of the ordinance. I thought if the building was under a certain size, like a tool shed, it could go on the property in the setback. Mm -hmm. And it can go right up to the property line if it's small enough. And at one time it was 100 square feet, and now it's about 120 or something square feet size. A tool shed can go in the in the setback I, th I think he out. might be right I'm looking that up right yeah, now yeah I think I, I support Nelson on that one it, yeah. it's not, I it's not I something we're going to solve tonight but it, but it's an avenue if you work with community development and they find that that's something that, that you can do, can do then then they can do it so if you try and limit that you'll have all kinds of people coming out with their tool sheds who will not be happy mm -hmm. with it People want to put the tool sheds usually on the property line, especially in yeah. the back. Yeah, you put it all the way in the back. Yeah. Um, and if the neighbors don't care, who cares? That's right. Um, but if, it, if it's uh, offending your neighbor. Um, well, I think, yeah, that, that's another issue. Then, then it becomes a little bit subjective. What is offensive, you know? Um, it's it's just offending such that they end up calling and saying you're not in compliance right. if you're not in compliance. That's it. I mean... And there's blinking signs all over town that's not to in compliance but sometimes yeah. they don't get called on sometimes they do yeah yeah I, yeah I don't have any problem with the notion that there's a rule that's enforced when someone is troubled by it um, in this case you know in this kind of a case it's the way all the setbacks work frankly if you built your house back on the property line and none of your neighbors and they didn't determine it when they give you your CO um, <laughs> That's fine there. Yeah. You know, until it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These things don't get a CO. Chicken coop usually doesn't get a CO. Yeah. No, no CO, no permit. Yeah. Um, but I thought that I remember because yeah. I had a shed that required a permit, and I 
thought that they told me when I did it that, because I asked about other sheds and other structures, and they said even if, I thought they told me, even if it doesn't need a permit, your setbacks are your setbacks. I thought. Well, I think there's exception. <laughs> I, I, I'm treading in your area. Is there not somewhere, and I, my brain seems to think, there's some sort of thing that you're allowed the, the enjoyment of your property. Is that... Not an, is that a, I think it's maybe English law and, and maybe not American law, um, but I'm certain well, in England you you are you are able to bring an action on the basis that you are being denied the the use or enjoyment of your property. Now, I don't know if that applies here. But yeah, you can make a case around something like that, but that's you know going to a lawyer and filing a lawsuit. That's legal which is action. Not necessarily is, what she's looking to do. She's trying to find a solution that well, doesn't require I've, that. With my, my I, and I hate to tell you this, but. Having read all the paperwork, I don't think you, I don't think anything other than legal action is going to stop it. That, that may well be the case unless the deal with the setback. It still whatever, doesn't so. solve the, the pile. Yeah, no, it won't. No, so no, the setback. And he may make it twice problem. as big because you poked him. That's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> unless you can find somebody who can go to him and say, I'll give you $60 a ton for your manure and then he'll get, take it off the side. <laughs> you got, you got any wetlands I'll around? I bet he wouldn't do it. I bet he wouldn't do it either. There's no wetlands it's around. Too none, much of the, fun. none of the manure is running into a wetland because that would be fun. That would but otherwise, fun. I'm sorry. So, I, I, hate I, think we're, I think we're stuck. I'm not sure we're going to sort out this setback thing. Robert's going to look into it and, and you can communicate with the department and figure it out. Other than that, I wish I had some better answers for you. I don't think that I do, though. Mm -hmm. I find it well, hard to I believe tried. that you don't need a permit to store almost permanently uh, fecal matter on your property. Use that is a seems, different thing. It but seems to me... If it was human waste, you would. But no, but for, for animal manure, it's fertilizer. So you've you got a whole uh, dump truck full of cow manure. To be counted as a storage facility, which it sounds like he's almost verging on. He's got a four by four by four foot couple plows, doesn't he, hen? I mean, we're not talking about spreading it on his lawn. Like, he's no. just keeping it there. Yeah, you don't need he's any. doing it. It's, it's, it's one, intentional. Four, three. That's what I'm saying. I'm, it, I find it hard to believe. If not the health department, then... Uh, zoning anybody could be you're well, not that's a storage you're facility. Us, that's what we I'm don't saying. Have zoning, we don't have right. a zoning situation. And if he was probably if he was taking it in from somebody else's property as some kind of commercial venture where he was either buying that or selling different. manure, different different. He's cat, selling. But, mm. He's selling his eggs. He's selling his eggs. I think that's part of the agricultural <laughs> use that yeah. makes him <laughs> follow in all those favorite yeah. parts of the regulations. So yeah. with that, I wish I had some better answers for you for tonight. I'll let Robert have the time to look that over without us all staring at him all night long. Okay. Get Thank in touch you very with their, much. Get in touch with their office and see if there's I, anything that we can do for them. Robert, may I have a number to call you? or? 424. Yes. 3531. Oh, 353. The one I have from Jillian. Thank right. you. Yes, they're, they're that goes to in all the same of office. That goes to everybody, um, okay. Thank does anyone you. have any other items of concern, general items of concern for discussion? Are there any minutes to approve tonight? Yes, yes we there have are. a set of minutes. minutes of Tuesday, May the 2nd. Uh, what's the will of the board with respect to the minutes of Tuesday, May 2nd, 2017? I approve them as written. Motion to approve as written. Second, Second to approve as uh, written. One, one little. <laughs> let them have it. Okay, okay page ten, uh, where we're talking down. Uh, let's see, the one, two, three, four, fourth, uh, fourth paragraph is a big long one, beginning with Steve Pernoff. In, pardon? Lines, lines are numbered. What, what, Just, what oh, line? oh, okay. Uh, well, it would come after line twenty-seven. Uh, an additional. So twenty-eight. Twenty-seven A. Twenty-seven. 26, 27. Yeah. 10 minutes of 11. <laughs> okay. The, the thing I asked Mr. Parnaw to do, and I hope it got back to him, I hope he recorded it at the time, was I wanted him to take account of the Flatley development in his background traffic growth. And I wanted to know that that was included. Well, it would come around line 27. It would be another sentence, Zina. Uh, uh, it might say something like, uh, Mr. Disco asked that uh, the uh, flatly development traffic be included in his background growth traffic. Twenty-four one steep one hundred compares projected growth rate on DW Highway. Yeah, it is. It's there. Twenty-four twenty-five. Well, okay. Okay. You should I say to include flat. I give up. 
Yeah. All right. To include flat. All right. She got it. She got it. I okay. Didn't. All right. Any other comments? Read them two Changes? All in favor of approving them as amended, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Seven zero zero. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second all over the place. <laughs> Pick one. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone, for all the help. And